All right, here we go, Harry Spears. Welcome uh-huh. back. Yeah, let, I'm going to disappoint all y'all right now. We're not going to talk about what you think we're supposed to talk about or what y'all want us to talk about. Not because I don't want to talk about it, but for legal reasons, I just can't. But when I finally can, you will catch me here on Vlad talking about it. Mm. But you can also hear me talk about it on my podcast, Spears and Steinberg, available on all uh, streaming platforms. Hit me up on my Instagram under Aerie Spears, slide in my DMs, and I'll send you the goddamn links. There you go. What happened to your Twitter, by the way? Oh, that's been suspended. Oh, that's been gone. That's been gone. <laughs> Elon's yeah, not I, trying I, to bring you back. You know, we trying to we 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 trying to see. Yeah. You know, now that he he's taken over the ranks, right? Uh, and he's reinstated. Uh, you know, Lord Vader, aka Trump. Uh, there's hope for me. <laughs> right. So you know, we'll see. I'll just be back for the porn. There you go. There you go. Well, let's start off with this because this actually just happened. R. Kelly just dropped a new album. Right. Called I Admit It. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. New album from prison. I mean, clearly he wasn't recording in prison. I think right. it was just a bunch of songs that was floating around. In fact, the song I Admit It was out like a few years ago on SoundCloud. Okay. But now it's actually officially released. I see Kanye just dropped something new. Uh, yeah. And from what I heard, it's a banger. So I saw a funny clip on Instagram where... I think the caption was uh, something about how we now are changing our feelings because he dropped a banger and he's doing what he does best. And they showed a dude while the new song was playing, going to the trash can and pull out several old Kanye albums <laughs> along with some Yeezy shoes. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, no one's ever uh, really talked bad about his music. I mean, everyone knows right. that musically, he, you know, he's on point. It's just all the other stuff. But I do want to talk about Kanye in a minute, but... R. Kelly, people seem to be loving his music. Like, Boosie was rolling around, jamming to it. Well, you know. Like, like people still love R. Kelly. Like, I remember there was a, there was a house party down the street, and the last song of the night, when everyone was going crazy, right. Ignition. You know, uh, just because someone has uh, some bad deeds, or, you know, it doesn't change how great the art was. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to separate the two uh you know bill cosby is still one of the best comedic geniuses of all time Mm -hmm. uh what he did for black people in terms of uh bringing awareness to us not just being good times even though we certainly know that those black people and that kind of life for black people exist uh there was the other side that hadn't been shown so for him to put into america's consciousness uh that there are black people who are well to do successful mm-hmm. families that have both parents uh, who, who can articulate words and speak properly and not chop up grammar uh, was important. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't change, the bad deeds doesn't change uh, the art, you know, and, and you should be able to separate the two. I mean, Boosie's always big on nobody could do a versus against R. Kelly. Is there anyone out there that you think that could take R. Kelly in a versus? Right now, a living person. You know, uh, Usher is usually the name that comes up. Uh, Usher, uh, Chris Brown. I think Chris Brown could mm. have a R. Kelly. I mean, listen, clearly Chris Brown's a better overall entertainer because he dances and so right. forth, and he has an incredible voice. But when you look at the catalog. R. Kelly danced around them charges, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> For years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. He was moonwalking around it. And yeah. <laughs> Stepping in the name of love. In the name of love all around them charges. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. But I'm listen, hit for hit, I don't think Chris Brown is touching R. Kelly. Right. Hit for hit, plus all the songs that R. Kelly wrote for other people. Right. Like B2K and, right. yo, come on. I don't, I don't, listen, I don't know if Boozy is always the person that we go to uh, for what's what should be done in the, in the, in the proper manner. Uh, right. Boozy's a street nigga to the ultimate level. Yep. He seemed like, you know, he eats hot wings while taking a shit and rolling a blunt all at the same time. <laughs> He's one of them niggas. Oh, man, I can got, see him doing got that. Got black fingernails and, you know, thinking on the toilet, rolling the blunt, eating a hot wing and taking a shit all at the same time. Right. That's talent. Just go right through him. Huh? That's <laughs> talent. That's talent, nigga. <laughs> much, much love to Boozy, man. Yeah, yeah. That's the big homie right there. Yeah. Oh, but... 
Yeah, I mean, listen, R. Kelly is a, what I consider a multi-generational talent. Like in multiple generations, you right. don't see someone on the caliber of R. Kelly. I guess he's trying to get his charges uh, removed and a new trial or so forth, right. but there's so many charges and so many different states and so many witnesses and videotapes. And yeah. I mean, look, man, it's hard to dispute when there's actual evidence of you munching out of the back of a bitch's ass. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? What was it? The Chappelle show? Remember they did a skit? You know, where he's going to trial. I was like, that, that's not my client. That could be anyone. Oh, my social security number? Sure. It's right, the, two, right. three, four. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is R. Kelly. I, I, I'll say this. And, and, and Dave was phenomenal with the Chappelle show and the R. Kelly pee on you thing. But right. I still say to this day, Mad TV rivals, I piss on you with statutory rapes. Uh, between them two sketches, I think we had the better sketch. But Dave's a fucking brilliant genius, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He had the, the pee on you and the pee on you remix. Yes. Yes. You know, they, yes. they poured like poop on people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill Cosby is now back in court. Dude, I was, I, you know, and, and, and you know, it's for, interesting for me. Like, I always look at it as what I call game tape. Like, I look at footage of things I've done comedically, interviews I've done with you, because I feel like there's always a way to go, okay, if that was funny and that's what worked, what could you have said differently or what could you have done differently to up the ante on the funny? And, uh, dude, your, that laugh, you your, your laugh was great when I did that Cosby shit. Mm. And I said, put it in the spoon to go to work. Dude, your laugh was phenomenal, man. People you like got an infectious laugh, laugh people man. Got, people like my laugh. I've yeah, it's a before. good laugh, I'll, man. I'll take it. It's a good I'll laugh. Take it. Well, five more women have accused Bill Cosby of sexual abuse. Oh. With one claiming back to the, you know, incident happening in 1969. Mm. Mm. This one must be 184 years old. Let me tell you. 1969. How how do you even argue something that happened back in 1969? I mean, you know, the books stay open for us. That law stays open for us. They got different rules for niggas, you know. That is 53 years ago. It don't matter Half how long. Half a century ago, this I, man. <laughs> Paul, when it, I, that, if that nigga is a nigga, they're coming to get you. Niggas are like that movie with Tommy Lee Jones, uh, at that, that, that Marshall nigga, they're coming to get you. What was that Harrison Ford movie? With Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, that movie, that nigga. Niggas are always on the run, God damn it! Oh, I know what you're talking about, Tommy. The Fugitive. The Fugitive. There niggas we go. Niggas are fugitives. That <laughs> white man is like Tommy Lee Jones. Nigga, run, nigga, run. That white man's coming for you. So, well, I mean, it's just a civil suit. He's not going to jail over it. Right. He's got I mean, the money how, to fight it. How many it. years has he got left? Yeah. You know? I mean, you got you to gotta give him props for... You know, number one, he never changed his story. Right. He could have, you know, while being locked up, he could have said that I'm guilty and I'm sorry and got his time but, shaved but off. But why change the story if there's no story to be changed? Well, because people just want to get out of prison. That's why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People change stories all the time. It's mm. Like, I interview people like this. You know, and, but, but he actually sat in jail not knowing whether his appeal was going to go through or not. It ultimately did. He was able to walk out. But while in prison, he would not take like, you know, like the the rape type classes where you talk about what you did and admit your guilt and go, you know, to the review board. And say, if I'm he's sorry. innocent, he shouldn't. Well, and he, I mean, and you got to understand this is a very old man also knowing that at any point he might get sick and die in prison. Right. And this was, I believe, during COVID time. Well, yeah, it was during COVID times. Right. Absolutely. So, listen, at the end of the day, he's got probably hundreds of millions of dollars still. Uh, he's just going to fight this thing and stall it out and may not live to the <laughs> to the actual court date. Right. And, you know, it just is what it is. But the fact that it's going back to 1969. You know, these hoes always wanted to get me, you see. But I knew I didn't do anything that told me that it did. I put the pills out. I said, this is optional. And when they said they didn't, wasn't sure if they wanted to take it, I gave them the option to say no. But in my, those days, no really meant yes, if you know what I mean. Okay. Oh, all right then. Well, Bill Cosby, it is what it is. Hope you get through it. 
Uh, still one of the greatest comedians of all time. Uh, a whole lot of women accuse you of some shit, though, man. I think this is the 182nd oh, woman that is actually- The bitches is lying. The bitch, you know the bitches lie. That's what they do. They lie. They lie the moment they get ready to go out. They put on the makeup. They put on the eyelashes and the lips. It's not even the real face. They're liars. That's what they do. I never did what the people said I did. I only did what they thought that I didn't do when I know what did it. Mm. Well, Kanye has yes. do dominated the news. Now, you would actually put up a clip on your IG where uh, it was a clip from Kanye and Alex Jones. Yeah. Where he said that Obama wasn't the first black president. He was the first Jewish president. Mm-hmm. Which was a head scratcher. Yes. Even Alex Jones seemed confused. Right. When Alex Jones is like the voice of reason in the room, <laughs> you know something is crazy. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm going to tell you, uh, I don't know what it is about that Kardashian pussy, man. But uh, that shit is like the Madden cover curse. It, 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 it just, <laughs> no one walks away from that unscathed, man. Hmm. It's something about it. And I really can't, you know, listen, whatever. Applaud him for being gazillionaires, but I can't stand that bitch, man. I really can't, dude. Like, it's like, just what do you do? Wait, so you're putting it on Kim? I, you know, Come on. hey, pussy's Come potent. On. Pussy is potent. It make motherfuckers wild out. Do not, uh, here's what I will say though. Listen, man, and this is where I kind of feel a little bit of empathy uh, for Kanye. Uh, at the end of the day, that man lost his family. Now, if you want to put some of the blame on him, which I'm sure, you know, nobody is 100% innocent. Uh, when a marriage doesn't work, but that man lost his family. Uh, and on top of that, to have Pete Davidson, and, and you know, look, if we're being honest and fair, Kanye fucked and poked the bear. You know, uh, Pete Davidson is a dude and he's a comedian. Yeah. And, and at first it seemed like Pete was willing to take the high road and fall back and not engage with Kanye, but he's a comedian. There's only so much poking and prodding you can do to a comic and a man before he goes, all right, enough is enough. So Kanye may have welcomed some fire back, but nonetheless, as a dude, man, you know, when you lose your woman, you lose your family, you got another dude who you know is fucking your wife, your ex-wife, playing father to your kids, and then taunting you about it. Well, it, the it, taunting that, came after about a hundred Kanye that, well, I know, I know. But and he the, posted a picture of him in bed yes. in Kim's bed. So I'm, what I'm saying is, yes, Kanye started it, yep. but it don't make it any easier. It still don't make it any easier. But, well, not only did Kanye start it with, with Pete Davidson, but in terms of the marriage itself, like, listen, I, I don't know either. I mean, I've interviewed Kanye before a long time ago, but, you know, I don't I don't know him or Kim or, or so forth uh, these days. But... In terms of their relationship, I mean, not only was he constantly wilding out, you know, slavery was a choice. Uh, he quit his whole international tour on stage and then, you know, ended up at the hospital. He was always in Wisconsin or no, Wyoming, right? So he wasn't even really around the kids. Right. The kids are in school. You can't be in Wyoming and really be a full time father. And as a married man, you should be a full-time father, right? Well, well something's got to sacrifice a little bit. Now, you, the way you can't have it. You don't it's have very, it's uh, very, uh, Whoa, 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 whoa. No, uh, fuck that. Uh, it's very hard to be a billionaire and be 100% family at home man. Something's got to suffer for you to attain that kind of success and that kind of wealth. Uh, okay, okay. You know, you, uh, no, Vlad, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Me, Vlad, you, you, you sound like one of them women who, oh, it's not like a woman. No, okay. you do because right, you, let's go. you're one let's of them go. women who you want the, the house, you want the car, you want the lifestyle, you want the money, you want the title, but at the same time, you want the man to be traditional. Nothing about getting any of that is traditional. You oh. got to step on some necks, you got to break some rules, you got to hustle, you got to grind, you got to sacrifice. That comes with a price. I, I get all that. You can't have it all. Right, but you also don't have to be recording in fucking Wyoming. You could be recording in Los Angeles. Well, maybe- and go home and, see your, maybe, and go maybe, home and spend, hey, your, hey, spend hey, time with your kids. Kanye is a different cat, man. Maybe him being in Wyoming was a source of motivation. It was also- source Maybe of it was inspirational. It was also the source of his divorce, because basically while he was in Wyoming- Well, then fuck divorce. her. Okay. You can't have it all. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about 
the kids ultimately. Okay, you, you know but, what I'm saying? Listen, if you're away from your woman, your woman could come stay with you wherever the fuck you are. But when you have kids in school, you kind of have to be home a little more often. I'm just you, saying. You would like to be. You, you like can to be. be. Oh, there's no studios in LA? You can't build your own master Are you a studio? billionaire like Kanye? No. All right, then. But, so what but, are you talking but about? I, I got money, though. I, okay, I, I got, got money, No, no, no. You, you, please, you got cute money. I got cute money. You got cute money. I'll Kanye, take my cute money. Kanye got I make shit move money. Still? And in order to- Still? And, and listen, does he, does I could be, still have the, that listen, kind of money? Vlad, I could, be talk, I could be talking out of turn. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, for you to reach that certain level, I, I, I really don't believe that that just- Happens easily. I believe there's shit you got to go through. And along the way, if, if you have the right woman with you who's understanding who, and who's willing to go, you know what? For me to have the kind of things I want to have, this is what this journey requires. Mm -hmm. So that's when you need a woman who can be strong and understanding. But for you to nag and bitch and bitch, but yet you got all this shit, you can't have it both ways. Well, a lot of that shit she got on her own as well, like Skims and the Kardashian show. She just and got maybe. Skims. She just got, well, and he owns a percent of that. He owns like 5%. But what I'm saying is that Keeping Up With The Kardashian has been a huge show now for like, what, 15 years or some crazy amount. Like, she's legitimately a, a billionaire on her own, you know, on her own at this point. So it's not like she needed Kanye's money. It's not like she was a housewife that was doing nothing, that was just waiting for the Kanye checks to come in. She was always hustling as well. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that if you want a marriage to work, and parenthood to work, you can't do the same thing that you were doing when you were single. That's it. Billionaire, millionaire, thousandaire, it is what it is. Kids don't care about any of that shit. Kids just need time. Well, then Kim should go find a broke nigga. Well, because 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 dudes with money, you know, they move different. They think different. Yeah. They're on, they're on the hustle. They're on the grind. Yeah. Well, well, you're actually upset. I remember your Instagram post. You thought it was ridiculous that he's paying her 200000 a month in child support. Who wouldn't? That's ridiculous. Okay. Why is that necessary? Okay. First of all, it's four kids. So it's really $50,000 per I'm, kid. I'm, I'm going right? to quote, quote Bill Burr, the great comedian Bill Burr. Let's hear it. He goes, I'm still trying to figure out why it, why it costs $50,000 for a kid to eat Fruit Loops. So come on, man. Perspective. The, the, the kids need to... How much of that are they really utilizing? It's probably going to trust. Well, then let it do that. Is, do you think that Kim really needs 200000 a month? No, of course Kim not. Kardashian. Of course not. For people like you and I, 20000 a month for four kids it's is extortion. like two. No, no, it's like 2000 a month for you and I. That's the equivalent. That's too much. 2000 a month for four kids. Hey, man, them little niggas. 500 bucks a month is too much them for niggas, kids. And them You're kids, bugging them right kids, now. You're bugging right now. You're bugging right now. Them kids. 500 is too much for four kids. Them kids in Africa live off oh, the price God. of a cup okay. of coffee, God damn it. <laughs> them little niggas eat and survive for 50 cents. 2,000. Let's just, I'm just saying. I'm being funny, but I'm not. That ain't shit. For someone of who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, so just be, so just shit. because he can, he should. Your kids should have a similar lifestyle as you if they are your kids. But they're kids; they don't need that lifestyle. They should have a same similar lifestyle. You cannot be living in a mansion and have your kids scrammed into a studio apartment. Nigga, untuck your dick from your thighs. No, no, I'm going. I'm going to keep it where it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let it hang so you, right so now. So you think that's you? You think that's that? There's nothing crazy about that. No, two hundred thousand a month. No, what does that work out to a uh, per year? Like two point four million. Two point four million yeah. for kids. For four kids, when you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, yes, perfectly fair, perfectly fair for four kids. When you're worth hundreds of millions, I'm saying it's not like you and I are paying two hundred thousand. Even if I had Kanye money, that's ridiculous. Okay. It's, it's ridiculous. Probably, listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't sound like, when I looked at all the reports, it doesn't sound like he's even paying alimony. So actually, she's not even asking for spousal support. This is all going to the kids. She don't need that. She don't need uh, the child comes support. To, when it comes to like prenups and so forth, okay, it, it never, a prenup does not include child support. You know that, right? If she it's has, totally, you if have a prenup she has as much money as him yes. or more, does she need the child support? She doesn't need it, but I think it's fair for her to give it to Why? Her. Validate why? Because she has full custody of the kids. So, okay. She has full custody. Right. And so what's the burden? 
What's the burden? Of having the full custody. The father should pay his, his You're just saying dude. it because you're going, he should. Validate it. What? Why? If she has that. That is, that is his kids. Okay. But their love for him ain't based on money. No. Their love for him. So if he's, so if he is there yes. and he is loving him, hugging him, doing fatherly like shit. If he had 50-50 custody, then, then it would be zero child support. Okay, but you keep making it about the money. You keep making it about the money. I'm saying if he's doing the physical things, the mental things, the social things yes. with his kids that a father should do and the mom has as much money as him or more, you're going, he should just pay it just because. Yes. That's the most vaginal shit thing. I've ever heard. That is his kid. That's childlike uh, thinking. Childlike just because. Thinking. Just because. So, I want it just because. Okay, so so basically you're saying that, I can understand men, it, that men out there should only pay child support if the woman is financially struggling. But at the point that she's not financially struggling, then they should pay zero. This is what you're thinking. Yes. This is what you're yes. Right, well, if we, she's not we struggling, can agree, we can agree if she's this. not struggling and the kids aren't starving and they got a roof over their head and everything is good. Why you why you want to take money just because? Just because? Because the kids deserve that money. Like I said, it's probably going to go into a trust for those kids that are clearly his children. You know, I mean, I can imagine if it was someone else's kids, it'd be like, fuck them kids. But those are clearly his kids. Okay. And he is the father, and he should help financially support those kids. Help? But what help? There's no need for help. They're fine. What help? So they don't deserve. They don't Whatever it is they the deserve, body. Vlad, they're going to get it. Well, they? they got two Santa Clauses, okay. Kim and Kanye. Mm -hmm. they don't have, they, there's, no, there's no what we need we're not going to get. Mm -hmm. They're going to get it. So why 200000 Fair number. Fair number. Fair you, number based you, you, on you, his you, net you, worth. His you, net worth, I fully support it. I think he's happy to be paying that. No, what? no, no, he isn't. What man is happy to be giving away money? To his own kids? Oh God! You keep acting like his to kids. His own kids. You keep acting like his kids is in the projects, hurting. Not they all. live a wonderful life. Yes. So just because Kanye got it, he should give it. Okay. Do you think? Do you think? Number one. Do you think that Kim is taking that two hundred thousand, spending it on herself? No. Okay. So we got that established. Okay. This is not like a, a greedy well, baby. Stop saying it's for the kids because it's not. It's. What I'm saying, it'll probably go into a trust for the kids. That's probably what it's gonna, what's going to happen. Or it's going to be uh, used. I mean, these kids all go to private school, which is like 30, 40,000 a year. Okay, 30, 40,000 a year versus 200,000 a month. Okay. 30, they can cover 30,000 a year. Tell me why you need 200,000 per month. Well, listen, at the end of the day, you have uh, security. I've actually seen Kanye's kids out because we live, we both live in Calabasas. So I've actually seen Ka Kanye's kids out at like, you know, grocery stores and the such, and they always have security with them. They, they are a clear kidnap target based on the, the, you know, how much their parents are worth. I mean, their mom got kidnapped at one point. You know what I'm saying? So there's this, there's 24 hour security. There's that part. Kim has to hire extra security at the fucking school because Kanye's doing all the Nazi shit. Well, that just that's him on his shit, and that just happened. And he's always on his shit, though. <laughs> Is he ever not on his shit? Has Kanye always been the calm, collective guy that just like follows the rules? Kanye's always been different. Yeah, but what he's on now is a whole nother level. Yep. Well, let's talk about what he's on right now. He said, "I like Hitler." I insane. like the Nazis. Insane. That's insane. Here is the here is the thing. I actually made a tweet about this uh, today. So let me just for the record, ahead. Vlad, uh, yeah. you should hand in your man card and your Buffalo Wild Wing coupons mm -hmm. and never be allowed into another strip club again. Uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, for example, there are actually a lot of black people and mixed race people that were living in Germany at the time that Hitler took over. Uh, when he actually rose to power, they actually identified every mixed race child in Germany and forcibly sterilized them in order to further race, you know, to stop race polluting, as Hitler has said it. Without anesthesia, there's actually documentaries about some of these like black and mixed people that happened in Germany. Black people were routinely killed. Hitler had absolutely no love for black people. He despised them. They were not part of his Aryan race. 
Kanye has mixed children. If they were living in Germany at the time, they would be sterilized. He's so big on anti-abortion and so forth, but he's loving the guy who would have sterilized his own children. Listen, Kanye is doing interviews where he's, where he's wearing a fucking mask. We yeah. can't even see his face. Right. So, you know, you know, whatever, again, right now he's going through something. Uh, and like Jennifer Lewis, the great black actress Jennifer Lewis said, and I forget what interview, baby, get help. Just get help. Get some help. He's going through something. So, you know, hey, I wish yeah. him the best. Yeah, I mean, when you heard the comments about George Floyd as a black person. Well, that was really like just if you needed more than, like he's obviously said more than one thing to make you go, this motherfucker's bugging. But that truly was was the one that, you know, I think really offended us. Because uh, it was like, come on, man, we all saw the same thing. We all knew what that was. Yeah. So for him to go there was just uh, astronomically stupid. Yeah, and then he apologized because he said that the way Adidas has their, you know, foot on my neck, I now know how it feels for George Floyd to have that foot on his neck. Yeah. Uh, if the dumbest ever thing, if the dumbest thing ever said was a person, Kanye got it right now. <laughs> Kanye has got it. I'm telling you, man. Right, because, uh, you know, even without Adidas' money, Kanye's still alive. George yeah, Floyd. I mean, he's George not- Floyd is not. Right. So so that knee, not really the same knee. I'm just saying. Right. You know, the, the knee that George Floyd had on his neck was a whole lot more more serious, a whole lot more deadlier. Yeah. Duh. And, uh, you know, to, to compare the two. And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, the White Lives Matter. Uh, the fact that he's doing interviews with the head of the Proud Boys and he's rolling around with Nick Fuentes. Who, uh, by the way, doesn't believe that women should have the right to vote. Mm. Uh, Nick Fuentes called the black vote the N-word vote. Wow. Uh, I mean, he compared uh, Jews in gas chambers to cookies in the oven. Uh, It was, you know, these are the type of people he's rolling with. This is his new crew. And uh, I just don't get how a black man embraces being a Nazi and a and just a race hater and you know and so forth. I just I just don't get it. It just doesn't make any goddamn sense to Yeah, me. you know, listen, I think cuz cuz these Nazis hate you just as much as right. Jews. They right. really do. You know, I I hope something uh some sort of epiphany happens uh for him to turn this all around cuz you know, at the end of the day, you know, you still want to feel like he's your brother. He's your brother. You know, he's part of the community. Uh, and, you know, we don't want to see him vanquish in the most horrible way ever. So, you know, uh, like I said, I, I'm, 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 I'm empathetic to what he's going through. I, I wish him the best. And hopefully he can come home, man. Uh, this is sad. Yeah, I mean, I personally didn't think that uh, Adidas was going to drop him just because of how much money he generated for the brand. But uh, when you offend uh, a company that was started by Nazis <laughs> by saying Nazi shit, you're, you're doing a lot there. Yeah. Uh, Dave Chappelle's um, SNL monologue was was genius, man. I agree. When, and, he, uh, <laughs> when he said, I, Kanye said, I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas won't drop them. He goes, and they dropped that nigga immediately. <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I really don't like how the, the ADL – you know, attacked uh, Dave Chappelle's monologue, uh, even as a Jewish person, when I saw it. And, you know, I've, I've met Dave, hung out with him. Uh, I've known his comedy since before the Chappelle show. Uh, I thought what he did was actually smart. It was brilliant. It was not one-sided. I don't think that it was anti-Semitic in the least. Yeah, you know, I, I think Dave has is, is taken the mantle for being uncancelable. Mm, uh, yeah. Because he he's such, this generation's Richard Pryor, and the voice of reason. Uh, okay, I can see and, that. And yeah, he's that's so good comedically comparison. strong in his words and his thoughts uh, that he's who we got. So as as these young kids say, you know, protect this man at all costs. Yeah. Uh, well, D.L. Hughley actually said something interesting. He said if Kanye was female, he would be in conservatorship. 
like Britney Spears. Mm. That someone would be managing his bank accounts. He wouldn't be allowed to move around freely as he would like. He would have to have a handler with him and so forth. Because remember, Britney wasn't allowed to even have kids. They put like an IUD uh, in her arm. Who did that? Uh, I believe her father. Was that even legal? Was that possible? I guess based on the rules of a conservatorship. Uh, you're basically there to stop the person from hurting themselves. Mm. Right? And for whatever reason they did that, they they controlled her bank accounts and so forth. Well, the person that I think did that was for Kanye is no longer with us, his mother. Yeah, like who would you really pick? But, I mean, there's plenty of people out there that have more money that aren't trying to steal from Kanye. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, let's just say Jay-Z was in charge of Kanye's finances. I don't think Jay would be skimming on the side and so forth. You know, I think he'd sincerely want him to get better. And you know what I mean? That right. type of person. But yeah, his mother's not around. And of course people blame, but he also said his mother was sacrificed. Sacrificed how? He basically, he did this interview where he said that, you know, oh, in Hollywood, you know, people get sacrificed. My mother got sacrificed. Uh, Michael Jordan's father got sacrificed. Uh, Bill Cosby's son, you know, Dr. Dre's like son. Like conspiracy theories. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you know, academics had a really interesting kind of take on this whole thing. He kind academics, of academics the same nigga that disrespected hip hop. He disrespected a specific person in hip hop. He just one person. He was actually talking about a specific person. I actually who know was who he talking about? Is. I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you off camera. Okay. It's someone I've interviewed though. Is it a legend in hip hop? Yeah, you can say it's a legend. Okay, well, you then can say it's a legend, but not like a legend that everyone probably knows. Okay, well, anybody that came from the early era of hip hop is a legend. 80s rapper, basically. Okay, they started it. They started this. So, yeah, I don't know if academics is the go to guy. Well, what academics said about, about Kanye, he basically said that Kanye is a, a man with no country right now. He's alienated the black community, he's alienated the Jewish community and the entertainment community. Uh, I mean, he's an alienated uh, everyone but, but the Nazi <laughs> sympathizers. So now, He's put himself in the conspiracy theory community. And words like sacrificed is like a big keyword for conspiracy theorists. Oh, oh, he was sacrificed. She was sacrificed. Kanye reminds me of a man without a country. Okay. He, he's, he's, he's a man grasping for straws to find a backbone and a group of people to rally with him while he goes for really a selfish plight. Like he, he's just mad what's going on with Adidas and just like he used the entire black community back in like 2013 uh, or whenever he dropped Yeezus when he, and it was just like, oh, they won't give me a shot. Kanye has always used the public or certain facets of the public to get him to accomplish his um, public um, agenda, whatever that is. I think now he's trying to do it twofold, right? I think he's trying to latch on to these people who, you know, whether it's Kanye or Kyrie, like, if, if you one of them cynical motherfuckers who believe in conspiracy theories, he just hit the trigger for you. Sacrifice. Anytime you hear the word sacrifice. Oh, yeah. First of all, there's certain motherfuckers who actually believe any death is a sacrifice. You know, you ever heard that? Like, oh, you know, so-and-so only got big because they sacrificed, you know, their The their Illuminati. Son, the Illuminati, that right. type of thing. Yeah. And look what he did. Like, right after all that sacrifice shit, he went on Alex Jones, who was the king of the conspiracy theorists. Mm. You know? And then he went on, you know, the founder of the Proud Boys, another big, you know, the guys who are in charge of trying to, you know, storm the Capitol and so forth. Like, this is where I think he has found his tribe. And this is what he's easing into. Like, these are the people that are actually supporting him now. Because, you know, like you said earlier, I don't think black people was really fucking with him after the whole George Floyd shit. You know? Well, listen, all they got to I mean, do is drop one hot album and we'll be back. You think? That's well, do you think that Kanye will ever be able to do corporate deals again? Sure. I mean, if, if you know, if he generates the right kind of revenue, you know, everybody's always looking for the next buck. Really? Yeah. After so. all the shit that he said and doubled hey, down man, on. This and is America, else. baby. This is what it, this country is all about. 54 and 58 chances. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, he could, he doesn't really need 
corporations like he could basically release a bunch of sneakers on his own website and right. make millions of dollars you know i was never a fan and i'm still you know i'm, I'm still not a fan of the yeezy uh i like yeezy. clothing line no the clothing is trash but the, the sneakers are good well I, I i'm not even a fan of the sneakers but what i will say is this i've, I've turned my thinking around in in this sense that sometimes black people as a community we spend so much time trashing each other and not supporting each other. You know, Kanye's shoes, clothes, to me, it's all under the umbrella of art. Uh, and art is subjective. So he should be allowed the, the free reign to be as weird artistically as he wants to be. And rather than thrash him, I mean, of course, you don't have to buy it or wear it, but rather than thrash him, allow him that room to do that. Because we, how many black, uh, entrepreneurs can we name in the in the in the world of clothing and and other uh, things where you know you put him up there with some of the white top tier designers? Virgil, who's Virgil? You know who Virgil is? Virgil no, Abloh. I, I don't. The the off white guy. You never heard of off white? No. Off white was one of the biggest clothing brands in America. Uh, if not internationally, he became the creative director of menswear at Louis, Louis and he's Vuitton. Black. Well, he he died about a year ago from cancer. Okay, but he was huge. You've never seen Off White? Hold no. on, let me show you. What it was. But how many black people? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this, this is actually this is actually important because right. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you though, this, why this you pull a, it up? This is why a big you, figure. Why you pull it up? How many people? You, do you, you never see like, like these sneakers that have like the the tags on them and stuff like that? No, you never no, seen this? ever. Okay, but, but anyways, how many black people you think know of an off white? Know that name? Every black person I know knows all about off white. Well, you, you how, well, you talking about the black? You talking about street black people? I'm talking the about the common black person. Everyone, yo, off white are like the most name. Sought, some of the, hold up, sought name, after Nike sneakers that they make. Vlad, I know you. I know you like to think you have your finger on the pulse of the black community. Everyone, but, let, trust me. Everyone in the Vlad, comments let knows me about off white. I'm gonna quote something that people <laughs> okay. say about your show. Okay. Shut the fuck up and stop talking over people. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. My question to you Go is ahead. this, because I know you like to you like to think you have your finger on the pulse of black culture more than black people. So my question is, name some of the black people that know that you know that know off white. Every rapper I know. OK, stop right there. Okay. Every rapper, you know, yes. do you think that the mainstream of black America gets a chance to know every rapper, you know, I think. That and then you're talking about music, which bleeds into Art and part of hip hop yeah. is about clothing. Right. It's about style. Right. It's about swagger. Yep. And clothes represent swagger. Yep. I'm telling you, the average black person walking down the street, have you said to them, what's his name? Off white? Well, his name is Virgil. Oh, even more so. Do you know who Virgil is? Yeah. Nah, nigga, who, Virgil who? The nigga in the, ma in the mail room? Okay. They would not go All Virgil, right. the clo the person that makes All clothes. Right. We'll see in the comments. We'll let the comments, we'll let the comments speak for itself. And, and 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 again, I, I the reason why I asked you this is because I know the black people you talk about. You know a lot of black people who are famous, mm -hmm. who are wealthy, yep. who are successful, yep. who are in the biz. Mm -hmm. The biz is not mainstream America. Fair enough. The biz ain't niggas in Ohio. The biz ain't niggas in Arkansas. I guarantee you, niggas in Arkansas and Ohio and everywhere else in the country have never heard of Off White. We're going to see the comments. No, I know. We're I know. Going, you know why I know? We're going, we're going do you know why I know? Ask me why I know. Why do you know? Because I'm black, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I know my people. I know my community. So back to my point about right. Kanye. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Let me just make a point. In terms of prominent black designers, there's the guys that started FUBU. And that, yeah, which is no longer in business. No, they are still in business. They're FUBU, absolutely. they're closed? FUBU? FUBU closed is still in business. Where? Uh, they did a whole uh, capsule of Black Lives Matter before the whole the whole thing kind of blew up. You know, Black Lives Last Matter. Last time I've been to the mall, I ain't never seen no FUBU it's shit. It's mostly overseas now. That's uh, okay. The That's the whole thing. Okay, but you know that. Mm -hmm. How many niggas know that? <laughs> and ain't no niggas looking for FUBU. <laughs> FUBU went out in the 90s. <laughs> 2000s. Okay, so my point about Kanye, yes. all I'm simply saying is the way you got a Calvin Klein, a Tommy Hilfiger, and a thousand other white uh, people that make clothes, let Kanye live in that space. No matter how weird we may think it is or how space. ugly we think the did. clothes I are, I, rather than me go, man, that shit ugly and thrashing, I, I applaud him and say, hey, bro, do you. 
Listen, I have a whole closet full of Yeezy sneakers. I'm wearing Yeezys right now. Like I've been supporting his brand really since day one. Since since I have the original, you know, Turtle Dove Kanye uh, 350s. Like like I, I actually have a big Yeezy collection. I was a big supporter of, of what he did. I mean, I have historically been not only a, a big supporter of his clothes. Uh, I've listened to all his albums. You know, all of his singles, all of his guest appearances. I've interviewed him before. We've covered him damn near every week since I launched Vlad TV 15 years ago. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I like him as an artist and a fashion designer. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And at the end of the day, he got dropped by every, you know, Adidas, Balenciaga, Gap. Uh, he tried to go to Skechers. They kicked him out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's everybody, hard. Hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not validating again anything that he said because what he said was wild. Uh, but I also know that people like to jump on the bandwagon, and the same way they jumping off the bandwagon. Again, if he if he gets hot again, artistically or in in, in terms of popularity, don't quietly jump back on. We'll see what happens. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I'm interested to see whether he could get back to the heights of where he was. I mean, like, you can't really predict these things in, in 2022-23. Like, Takashi became the first rapper to tell on everyone and to come out and somewhat have a career. I'm not going to say he had the career that he had before, but he's still overseas. He shouldn't have had the career he had the first time. Well, but he did. Okay. He trolled his way into well, a career. He, he trashed his, his, his currency now. Right. He trolled his way into a career and he had some big songs and now people ain't fucking with him the same way, but he's still overseas making money and still is able to function as Takashi. So it's in interesting to see what'll happen with all the Nazi shit, but, but all the anti-black shit, whether he could get back to where he was. Maybe he will. That's a big Maybe hurdle. Won't. That's a big hurdle. It's a big hurdle. But, I think but, but, I, the, but the difference is in terms of substance, true talent and ability, Kanye is head and shoulders above Takashi. Oh, it's not even a So he's got even, a good shot. It's not even the same conversation. No one's ever said that he wasn't talented. But the whole thing is, is that I think every corporation now is very clear that they know that if you do business with Kanye, it's probably going to blow up in your face. Not only is he going to try to get out of the deal publicly if he doesn't like something that happened, he's going to do fucked up shit like make a video of all the executives watching porn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm looking, or, or, or like, you know, make a make a newspaper article that says that the CEO of Adidas is dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he, fucked he, up he, shit. He definitely has the fucked ability to dig you himself know, deeper. You know, he's saying that, that the oh, the Jews froze my, you know, kicked me off of JP Morgan, my bank accounts. But no, he talked shit about the CEO of JP Morgan. He, he, pointed out the actual CEO and talked a bunch of shit about him. And J.P. Morgan said, we don't want to do business with you anymore. Oh, that's so unfair. Talk about the boss of a company. See if that company wants to fuck with you afterwards. That's you their know, choice. My, you don't have my, to my, bank my, with my, anybody. My, my podcast partner, Andy Steinberg, mm -hmm. who's also my feature comedian, comedian, he made that very point when we talked about a little bit of this with Kanye. It's like, you know, I, I've never been a big conspiracy theorist guy. And I know that a lot of, especially on the... And this is why I hate social media, but I love social media. On one end, I love it because you could get lost in a video matrix scrolling and, you know, be entertained for a couple hours uh, or see some beautiful titillation. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, everybody's got a fucking voice now yeah. and everybody doesn't need to be heard. Some people need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. And, and then I, I get so tired of some of these black people who are so woke. Nigga, we woke. Man, it's deep. Look at what Kanye is deep. Some of what Kanye says in certain ways, you could go, okay, I see where he's coming from. Uh, especially if you know the history of what we have gone through in this life, in this country, in the record industry, in Hollywood. Kanye does make valid points, but he also does things to dig himself into a hole. And like your point and my podcast partner's point, you can't shit on the head of a company and then go, man, they fired him because he was woke. No, he they fired him because he shitted on the head of the company. Exactly. Blatantly. Right. Said foul, wild shit. So, you know, 
Some of us need to own up to the responsibility. Right. I won't do business with someone who publicly shit on me, you know, who I've been paying money to. You know, I've done that before. Like, you publicly talk shit about me while I'm paying you at the same time? Nah, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And sometimes people, like, they get it twisted like they deserve the position that they're in. I deserve to be paid this much. And I can say whatever, and you still have to pay me. It's like, well, no, some people do it. deserve to be paid more. That don't mean that, you know. If you shit on the person who pays you. Right. You can't chances shit on are those payments are going to stop. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, you can't shit on the person that signs your check. Exactly. They don't have to keep writing you those checks. Right. You are not the only game in town, whether you're Kanye or Vlad or Ari Spears. We could all be replaced with someone who does something similar to what we do. Right? Right. It just is what it is, and I'll put myself in that same boat. I know if I shit on people, I probably won't be doing business over there anymore. And sometimes I have shit on people. I, I, I hope I and don't, I've accepted it ahead of time. I hope I don't fuck this Patrice O'Neill quote up. But he was on Opie and Anthony. And he was talking about in regards to himself because everybody knew he had the reputation of being a bridge burner. Uh, he was, but of course, everybody also knew how immensely talented he was. And he said, you know, Hollywood will take 70% uh, talent, 30% nice guy mm -hmm. uh, over the other way around. Yeah. You know what I mean? 70 over 30%. They will, they will, uh, they will take wait, thirty. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I fucked that. Yeah, I knew yeah, I was gonna yeah, fuck like, that hold up. On, hold on, hold no, on. they will take thirty percent nice, talent, talent, seventy percent nice, nice guy, guy versus over seventy percent talent, thirty percent nice, nice guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I have done thousands of interviews over the years. The biggest people I've interviewed, people like Snoop, Nelly, and so forth, are the nicest most polite people ever. Well. Ever. I'm, I'm dead ass. Yes. I'm dead ass. Professional, there to do a job. No, you would think they would act a certain type of way based on who they are, you know, Akon and so forth. No, these people are there. Well, let me say this. I can't yeah. speak to Nelly okay. uh, and certain other rappers, but I do know a lot of rappers, especially early in their career, thugs, gangsters, wasn't the nicest dudes until they found out how profitable it was to smile. Right. Like, smile, nigga. You know, murder was the case that they gave me, Snoop. Shit. But then once he figured out how to smile and loosen up yep. and do songs with Katy Perry and Willie Nelson. Do shows with Martha Stewart. America loves you now. Exactly. But when he was Snoop Snoop, no. Nah. Yeah, I mean, he was- When Ice Cube was Ice Cube, Ice Cube, he once had a song called Burn Hollywood Burn. And also Cave Bitch. But, you but, know, bitch. <laughs> you but know, now, but you know, now, are we there he's yet? The guy that's making family movies. So, yeah, I hear you, but I'm yeah. just saying a lot of them dudes didn't start out that way. Yeah. Well, well speaking of Ice Cube, it's actually interesting. He was on, uh, I think, Mike Tyson's podcast. And uh, it's funny, Mike Tyson had little Nas X, but won't have me. Hmm. Fucking hilarious. And they flew me out to Vegas to do his podcast. Oh. And I was supposed to, they flew me out. Wait, 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 what happened? They flew me out, okay. put me up in a great hotel. Okay. It was supposed to be me, Zab, Judah, and Tyson. And okay. then the next, and we were supposed to go out to dinner with Mike that night, next day do the podcast. And I know Mike knows who I am because when I was on, once upon a time ago, when I was on Best Damn Sports Show, uh, for a whole month, they had me on with the guys doing the show. I was only supposed to be on for a couple of weeks, but I was killing it. So they was like, man, we want you for the whole summer. So at the end of my run, Tyson was going to be the guest. I was going to already be finished, but I'm like, yo, y'all got to let me meet Mike. I'm a boxing fan. I love Mike. So they do this big build up to Mike coming in. They got the camera watching the limo come up to the studio, him get out, go in the elevator, walk through the hall. So at one point I'm in the hall and his mic is coming to me. I'm like, yo, Mike, man, I just want to tell you. He said, I know who you are, nigga. I don't know who you are. And because, you know, I took all them shots on him at Mad TV. Mad TV, yeah. So he knows who I am. I don't know that he's a fan. So the next day they called me, the producers, and they go, and I knew it was coming. Because when, because the day before, Mike came up to shoot an episode, and they shot it on the roof of this hotel. 
And so I said hello to him the day before and he said hello, but it was the way he looked at me like this nigga. So <laughs> the next morning I get the call and they're like, yeah, man, you know, Mike's not feeling too good. Some chances are it ain't going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You know, Mike gets moody. So, you know, if he's in a good mood, it happens. If it's not, it don't. So I just was like, I know what this is. So it, it ended up not happening. Mm. But I, I just, I, you know, I saw a little Nas X on there and I was like, you fucking kidding. Hmm. I'm going to talk to Zab Judah. I actually know Zab. I know Zab too. I got his number in the cell. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know what really happened. I want to I know if it really was, was canceled because of that or maybe something. You know, I mean, because Mike, Mike, you know, I'm not sure if he's bipolar, but he does have you yeah, know, yeah, issues yeah, yeah, that he's yeah. dealt with over the years, right. possibly depression and so forth. Yeah. So maybe it's it's true. Maybe Mike just got in a funky mood and yeah. people around him know, okay, like if we try to get him to shoot tomorrow, it's going to end badly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I interviewed him, he had a guy that was like, no, no, no don't ask that. I'm really? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a few questions we wanted to ask. They're, they're like, no, 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 no. And my biggest disappointment would have been, I know that I would have been there for them to interview me but I would have wanted to interview him. Yeah. And most of my questions would have been about boxing. Like I was, I'm such a boxer. And I was like, I, even when I talked to the producers, I was like, hey man, is it all right if I ask boxing questions? Because I've seen a lot of episodes where he seems like he wants to talk about mushrooms and <laughs> deep philosophy. And I'm like, fuck all that. I'm with one of the greatest fighters of all time. Nigga, I want to talk boxing. Yeah. And I would have been disappointed if I'd have tried to go in that direction and he shut it down. You never know, man. Mike, you know, I interviewed Mike, you know, along with Zab Judah, actually. Zab did the majority of the interview, and I did some of it. And uh, Mike Mike actually is a very philosophical guy, man. I remember one of the really poignant things he said that still stick to me this day is that he said, it takes a woman to make you feel like a man. Yeah, well, I've, I've rarely seen a successful man that doesn't have a strong woman by his side. I just haven't seen it. Whether it's his wife or like a very serious girlfriend, Guys that are just offline by themselves usually make bad decisions because they don't have anyone to really talk their ideas through. I'm, I'm the same way. Well, I know this about my wife. This is what I know about my wife. This is the only thing I know about my wife. I don't know who she's sleeping with, who can she be with, but I know this, that her whole existence is me and the kids, my other kids too. Yeah. And as long as I know that, she can do whatever she wants. Right, because someone's wife is, I feel like, the only person that doesn't have an ulterior motive. If you win, they win. No. If you lose, they lose. The right along that, with you. The reason that we, do you know why, the, know why we have a mate? Know what the reason that we have mates for? For we, can, for we can know that we're men. Yeah. The only reason we can know that we're men is that we have a woman. Yeah. Other than that, we can't, we can't justify for being a man. So they justify us for being who we are. And we don't want to give them that credit. That's what we're not going to give them. <laughs> but that's the truth. But we're not going to give them that. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, yeah. But James Brown told us that. This man's is a man's world, world but it okay, wouldn't be well, shit the way Mike said it was a little, Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike was, I guess, possibly and, and let me now, now, let me just go back to my, my, my point earlier. Now, James Brown, this is a man's world, but it takes a woman, mm -hmm. right? Tyson takes a woman to make a... Man feel like a man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't shrug that off so easily when I go, pussy is potent, man. And Kanye, you know, I don't, I don't put all the blame on that, but that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Losing the woman that you love, even if it's your fault and your family and that structure and that peace and what that brings you and having knowing another dude is fucking her and even though you might have started it, your taunts have led to his taunts and now you being fucked with and embarrassed and ridiculed on social media and the internet. I'm just saying, all of that put together, yeah. Well, speaking of Ice Cube, getting back to uh, my original point, when Mike Tyson asked him about Friday and if there's a new Friday movie coming out, he was saying, no, there's been a lot of back and forth, but it hasn't and they don't own the rights. You know, Skew doesn't own the rights to Friday. Mm -hmm. So Tyson was like, you know, can you buy it? Can you pay for it? And Cube said, I ain't putting shit up for it. Fuck no. They need to give it to me. They go make money. I'm not about to pay for my own stuff. That's stupid. They need to do the right thing, 
get it to us. Let's turn it into more money and make the fans happy. We can do a lot with it. Uh, and, and by the way, he said that there was two screenplays that they actually submitted. The first one they rejected because they said the timing wasn't right. Yeah. So, so the second screenplay, you know, basically was just going nowhere. It was just a constant back and forth and it ended up, you know, getting scrapped as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm a huge Friday fan. Are you as well? Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I appreciate the Friday movies. Uh, and as much as I love Mike Epps in them, and he's fucking hilarious, I think a lot of people would love to see Chris Tucker back. Oh yeah. But my thing with Chris Tucker, Chris has the weirdest. I don't. I would love to know what's going on in his head because he to me is like the Barry Sanders of comedy. Uh, you know, who, who's another dude that? Uh, uh, Jim Brown Th these dudes who he's so talented but it seems like if the movie ain't called Rush Hour which I just saw they about there's to there's do a new, there's a new Rush, Rush Hour, Hour, Hour if the yeah. movie ain't Rush Hour Chris don't want to do no movies and I'm sitting here going if we are going to get Chris in a Friday movie I need the old Chris I need the, the this new Chris born again Christian shit Oh, he's born again Christian now? Uh, he don't curse. Oh, really? He, he, like, he, he's... Oh, he, I didn't know that. He, yeah, he, he's... Well, you just never see him, so I have no idea. Like, right, but he, he 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 said, I think he's born again. He don't curse. And for some reason, he does not feel comedically as edgy as he did, like, the Def Jam days. That that famous joke that he did when he was talking about fucking a girl and his mother come home and, Mama, Chris, hurry up. I'm trying to do shut the fuck up. I'm coming. Like that, Chris. Yeah. Fr the Friday, Chris. Man. Woo. Well, I think with Chris, from what he said, based on all the Friday cast members that I interviewed, and I've interviewed damn near all of them except for Chris and, and Cube. Uh, he got paid almost nothing to do the first movie. All right. And then suddenly he was given his own movie with Money Talks, which I'm sure he got a big. One of for. the funniest. Fuck that, Chris Tucker. Yeah. Money Talks, Chris Money Tucker. Talks, Money Woo! Talks, Chris Tucker. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> po cocaine. That cocaine was both. Oh, that scene with Faze on Love? Dude, the all, cell? <laughs> there's so many memorable scenes. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And uh, then came Rush Hour, which is you're paired with the biggest movie star from China. Yeah. So you have that huge crossover right. to the other biggest country in the world. But since Rush Hour... Nothing. What are the movies? Nothing. It was Rush Hour, then Rush Hour 2, Rush Hour 3, now it's Rush Hour 4. I think he did that one movie, I can't remember the name of it, with, oh, Rob, he, yeah, he was the, with he was Robert in, De Niro uh, and four, Bradley the, the, the Cooper. Fifth, well, he was in The Fifth Dimension. Well, I'm t that all came before Rush Hour. Oh, did it? Yes. Okay. Fifth Element. Fifth Element, yes. Yeah, yeah, that all came before Rush Hour. What I'm saying is once Rush Hour happened, Chris pulled a Barry Sanders and he stopped playing football. Let's take a look. Well, let me see. I mean, because he is 51 years old now. Yeah. Uh, he was a meteor man? Yeah, but that's, that again, that's... I didn't know he was in House Party 3. Yeah, again, before, all that's before and Friday. Then, and then Friday came, 1995. Yes. And then he was in Panther. Panther. He was in Dead Presidents. Yes. That was a good role. Yes. And then The Fifth Element. Yes. After Friday, that was 97. Yep. But before Rush Hour, you're right. Money Talks. Uh, he was in Jackie Brown. Forgot about that. Okay, yeah. And then Rush Hour, 1990. But I'm, I'm, when I say, I'm talking about where he is the star. And yeah. Jackie Brown, he played a little, he had one yeah, scene. Right. These are all small roles. Right. Except but what for I'm Friday. saying is, yeah. when you. It was basically Friday, Money Talks, Rush Hour. Right. And when you do Friday and then Rush Hour, and you are a bona fide A-list star, you can keep doing your own movies. But like I said, he pulled the Barry Sanders. He went from Rush Hour to nothing but rush hours. Well, yeah, because he did Rush Hour 1 in 98, Rush Hour 2 in 2001, then Rush Hour 3 in 2007. So basically for almost 10 years, he was exactly. doing one movie for Exactly. Right? That's why I'm sitting here going, what the fuck? Yeah, then he was in Silver Linings Playbook in yes, 2012. that's what I'm talking about. And that role was a bit role. I'm trying to remember if I saw it. I think I did. The fact that you go on, I think, yeah. is my point. Is this what I'm saying? Like, yes. I don't I, remember I, Somebody him. that immensely talented. Yeah. Who, who was a star. Why? Why? Yeah, I don't know. He was also in Billy Lynn's, Bi Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. I don't know what the hell that yeah, is. Yeah, I know that like I know Off-White. 
<laughs> and uh, he's going to be in a movie called Air Jordan. But they're okay. actually filming right now. Okay. And then there's Rush Hour 4. But you're right. He didn't do shit. Yeah. He hasn't really done shit. And remember, at one point, he had some tax problems. So I remember he was right. hitting like the, the stand-up circuit again. Yeah. Paying back his tax But that's what I'm saying. When I saw his stand-up, it was really strong marijuana. But was it, it wasn't cocaine. Was it cocaine? Okay. Yeah. I've never seen a stand-up. Chris Tucker, Def Jam. That Chris Tucker? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There was some bite. I think I had some bite. Yeah, no, he was the hottest comedian in the world at one point. Remember he was doing like, he was in California Love, Tupac, and Dr. Dre video? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. wanted a piece of Chris Tucker. And because plus, you hadn't heard that that voice. Yeah. Hey man, that 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 that, that you never heard. That was a breath of fresh air. It was yeah. it was something we never heard. Right. I'm telling you, man, Money Talks is one of my favorite comedies of all time. That movie has so much bite to it, and 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 uh, you, you can't even call it a scene stealer. He's the star of the movie. He's in every scene. Oh yeah, I mean uh, Charlie Sheen was definitely like a, a side man. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a sidekick. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and he was a big star during that time. Right, but not in that movie. Yeah, in fact, from what I understand, Chris Tucker actually fired the first director of that film because he wanted to like ad lib a lot of shit, and like the director was trying to get him to stick to the lines. And, and you and you saw it. Yeah, the beauty of him being exactly. free. So he actually fired him. He bought, he hired Brett Ratner, who had only done music videos at right. that point, and then did the rest classic. is history. Yeah, Brett yeah. was like, "Go ahead, <laughs> do your thing, <laughs> I'm man. happy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do your thing." And sure enough, <laughs> um, well, uh, Kyrie Irving. It was just announced that he lost his Nike deal. That's sad. He was making $11 million a year. Uh, he actually played the other night, and he wore his sneakers, but he put tape over them and said, I am free. Thank you, God, I am. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's sad, man. Uh, that was a public lynching. So you think it was a public lynching? Absolutely. So you think it was totally unfair what happened to him? Yes. Yes. Okay. Like he like 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 Dave echoed. He didn't put a caption uh, on the movie. Uh, he simply just said he watched it. Uh, we well, put a link to it. Hey, okay. Yeah. Uh, now listen, I saw the movie. Okay. Woo! You saw the movie. Uh, Jesus, that shit's long. <laughs> Four hours. It, it was three and a half. Three and it half was a hours. tough watch. And here's my thing. And I said this on my podcast. Of course you want to be as knowledgeable as you can. You you would love to be the smartest guy in the room. Uh to thumb your your nose down at learning would be ridiculous. Yeah. But at some point as I'm watching this, I'm going this is a lot of information. And unless I'm a contestant on Jeopardy where I need to know this to answer these questions or unless I'm an educator and I'm specifically teaching this for a course, what do I do with this information? How does this enhance my life? At the end of the day, let me give you the cliff notes, what I got from this, mm -hmm. which is what I think all black people already know. Black people are the shit, the end. <laughs> That's the movie. We, 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 we started civilization, we, 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 we invent uh, culture, we, 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 we we quick, we got swagger, we got slang, everybody steals from us. Like Paul Mooney said, everybody wanna be a nigga, but don't nobody wanna be a nigga. Black people are the shit. The end. Okay. I I I didn't need to see this movie to feel uh, uh prideful about who I am as a black man in America. Well, well look, I believe that when Kyrie looked at this movie, and I'm not sure that he watched the whole three and a half hours. It's t it's a, it's, it's tough. A, you know. He still has a full-time job playing basketball and all, you know what I'm saying? But I think that from what he watched it based on what his response were was to the early interviews was that he saw it as uh, basically black people are the original Jews. They're descendants of the you know tribe of Israel and so forth that he considered himself a, a Jew and so forth based on some of the things that were said in the film. Uh, as a Jewish person, I think that's fine. I have absolutely no problems with it. If you, if you feel that that you're connected to Judaism in this type of way, cool. I thought you were Russian. Well, I was a Russian Jew. And so actually, you're Russian was, and Jewish. Well, there was Jews that were you know scattered all over. What the you world. drink like matzo ball vodka, nigga? 
<laughs> I drink vodka. Uh, my family actually grew up in the Ukraine when it was oh, part. Okay. Of, when it was part of Russia, but we were Jews in Ukraine. Oh, okay, meaning that we, my parents couldn't go to certain universities. They can't get certain jobs. There was a lot of discrimination, which made us move to America, right? Uh, so, in terms of what Kanye feel, I mean, sorry, what Kyrie feels about being a, you know the roots of Judaism in terms of what the black Israel Israelites feel and so forth. I'm I'm hundred percent for it, man. If this is how you feel your connection with God is, and this is what you feel your heritage is cool. I'm hundred percent for it. Just like there's different types of Jews. There's Hasidic Jews, you know, the long beards and, you know, side curls who, you know, don't feel that people like myself are real Jews either and so forth. And there's, there's a big gamut of it. Right. But, from everyone I've talked to, and I haven't watched the film yet, but I've had long discussions with people like Van Lathan, who was here yesterday, who saw the film right. from beginning to end. You know, we talked about specific things that were problematic in that film. Like they referred to Jews as parasites. Uh, they referred to Jews as devil worshipers. Um, you know, there was a, the whole thing that the Holocaust didn't really happen. It was just a trick that Ashkenazi Jews created or that Hitler killed the Nazis, you know, because of how... Jews treated black people in America. And there's all these very kind of questionable type of things. And at the end of the day, if I posted a film and in that film, it said that, you know, slavery didn't really happen in America. That uh, black people worship the devil and they're evil and so forth. And there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff in there that's really uplifting, but there's those parts in it I think I would get the same treatment as Kyrie Irving, as a public figure. In fact, it might have even been worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. You don't no. think so? White people. What white, happened to Roseanne white, Barr? White, white. What happened to Roseanne Barr oh, the day, okay. the day okay. she tweeted that? You know oh, what I'm talking about, right? Finally. Black people have been ridiculed for so long publicly uh, by white entertainers and have gotten away with it or certainly not have been made to... Uh, go through what black entertainers have had to go through to make amends. You know, so, you know, because one slips through the cracks or Roseanne or this person. Well, Roseanne about Barr, time. Uh, Roger Sterling, who lost his team. Uh, the owner of the Phoenix Suns, who lost his All team. All of this is recent. Black people have been fucked with since way before recent. Kramer. Okay. Terry, was it Terry Richardson? Uh, his name? Yeah. Kramer's oh, real name. Uh, on, so let me make sure. Richards. Uh, uh, Michael Richards. Michael Richards. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. They're talking about someone else. Yeah. And and, and what M you're Michael saying. Wait, 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 wait. What you're saying now, too? Yes. Michael Richards, Roseanne. How long ago was that? Was Michael Richards was, was like, what, 16, 17 years ago? Okay. That but, was a long time ago. That okay. was before Flat TV. Okay. But you know what? Now we're getting it on film. Right. It's been existing way before film. No, I got it. I got it. I'm not, I'm not saying it hasn't been listen, historically listen. fucked up. What I'm saying is that Michael Richards, who was part of the biggest, you know, TV franchise almost I know where you're history, going with this. His entire career ended let's, after that video came out. Let's, let's As stop. he should, because he said some fucked up shit. Vlad, let's video. be honest. His career ended the moment Seinfeld walked away. He could have still had a career after. No, he couldn't have. Because remember, he was given his own show after, and it tanked. Okay. But look, but, at, but you got, look at the other people Can I explain show? something to you about Hollywood? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. When you're that character, oh, John, coming through the door, oh, John, you're typecast. Okay. So he was not going to have a career past Seinfeld because he was always going to be seen as Kramer. And and if and, and and listen, that meltdown that he had at the yeah. Laugh Factory. Oh, that was the Laugh Factory in LA? Yes. Ah, wow. I, I don't know okay. this for sure, but maybe part of that came from the fact that he knew I'm always gonna be fucking Kramer. And the frustration of that made him snap. Didn't he say that like all the black people, like y'all would be hanged or yeah. some shit like that. Yeah, some about he a said, fork. He yeah, said some forks up shit. your asses or, or, or I love what Dave Chappelle said. He went. Uh, he had a bad set. We just had a bad set. So, you know, the, 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 the black man in me, the black man in me yeah. is going, man, that's fucked up. The comedian in me is going, like Dave said, motherfucker had a bad set. Okay. 
well, it was a bad set that he never recovered from. But all I want to say is when you look at that show, Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Okay. Has her own Showtime series. That's rare, Vlad. Jason Alexander continue no, to his get, career. He ain't been. To get he, he, he ain't been. He, he ain't continue been, to get movie roles. What movie role? Name a notable Jason Alexander movie. I'm about to tell you, he was in that. Uh, he, the fact you, Pretty Woman. Boom. Like, Pretty Woman was before Seinfeld. No, was it? During yes, it was. Maybe during Seinfeld. Okay, let's, let's look it up. Jason Matter of fact, I want to say before uh, 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 Seinfeld. Let's, let's look it up. Let's look. It up. wasn't after Seinfeld. That was a major film, though. Hold yes, on. it was. Hold on, but hold anything on. prior to? Hold on. Pretty Woman came out in 1990. When did Seinfeld come out? Okay, I see where you're going with this. Where, it, where start, did it, it, start, it starts in 89. So yeah, this is at the Nigga, I know my shit. Stop right. trying to tell me about Hollywood and black shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, doing this shit for 32 years. I've done my homework. I'm a student of this motherfucker. I mean, he's been in a ton of movies. But nothing notable. Not, not nothing, nothing that would... Listen. Okay. If, J if Jason Alexander had been someone who could have been a major star, carry movies... Be the lead. Okay, he would you. have Larry David. Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, he was the main writer. He he was the co-writer okay. of Seinfeld. Right. What's your point? I'm saying that people from that show went on to have. But good Larry David, listen, Larry David is not a George Clooney, a Will Smith, a Denzel. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Is it's a, a big, big fucking. Show. It's a big television hit. Television. A huge television hit. Okay, it ain't a movie star. Seinfeld ain't a movie star. No, he's not. He's a All right. Star. All right. But he's still a star. Okay. He's still but there's levels to this audience. shit. You, you, think if Seinfeld, you think Seinfeld, if he could be, you don't think he wants to be a movie star? Of course he does. Well, it seems like with something like Seinfeld, he made so much money off that fucking show that he essentially just retired after that. What a nice problem to have. <laughs> But a lot of these stars are very egotistical. And what feeds the ego better than being a movie star on the big screen? Yeah. A list. Yeah, I feel you. Well, uh, LeBron said something interesting recently. Uh, when he was asked about Kyrie Irving, he said, how come you're not asking me about Jerry Jones? Uh-huh. And you've actually posted the Jerry Jones uh, picture. I, which I thought Instagram. was very funny. Uh, I, I posted the picture and I said, it looked like to me, he doing what he always done. Looking for scout for talent. Thank you. Sometimes you be sensitive like a woman, <laughs> nigga. Oh my God. Hey man. That's hilarious. <laughs> Did you see the post? Uh I, I saw you had post the picture. So when you see that picture of him yeah. in the background looking like this with two <laughs> black dudes in the for, in the up front. And I go, yo, it looked like he looking for talent. That's not funny. Right. I mean, the only part that's not funny is that they're actually stopping black kids from integrating into a school. That's what comedy is, man. It's laughing through the most horrific tragedies. Right. Right. Well, Stephen A. Smith actually defended Jerry Jones. Right. Uh, and really, Jerry Jones, he didn't deny that actually he was in the pick. He basically said, yeah, that's me in the pick. I think he said, you know, I was a part of stopping the students. I was just curious to see what was, what was happening. And how old is he in that pick? Like a teenager, right? Yeah, he's about 15. Listen, I'm not making any excuses. He's 100 for, years old right now. Okay, I, I, I'm not making any excuses, but you got to think. In that time, he's 80, by the way. That's what that was. And as a young kid, as a young person, as any human being, when there's drama going on, right. we all want to, hey, what's happening? So he's a kid in that picture going, what's happening? D did that mean that he... Literally was the guy that's going, I'm leading the charge to stop black people from getting into school. I don't think so. But if he was a part of the moment of the time, give me a fucking break. Hey, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, he has to explain that picture. No Does more. he? Or, or he doesn't. Or he won't. I mean, he really hasn't. He's 80 years old. I don't He's think a he white gets... man in America. He ain't got to explain a goddamn he thing. He also owns the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So, you know. Listen, at the end of the day, I, I think... Listen, I, I don't know, and I've said this before. Do I truly believe... I think I even said it on your show. The first time I ever did your show. Mm -hmm. I said, black people know not all white people are racist, but as a race, you guys are known for racism. Yeah. Which is to say, yeah, do I think every white person living and breathing is racist and, and, and is out to do a black person harm? Of course not. But it's not a news flash when we find out 
somebody white said some racist shit. It's it's sewn into the fabric of this country. Yeah. It's sewn into white consciousness. Yeah, listen, I, I've always felt that America should apologize for slavery. Should do more than that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at one point I had said that you know, I support We're still waiting on reparations. Well, I, I said I support reparations, possibly in the form of a free college education. People got on me on that. And once I saw what happened with COVID and the amount of money that America just threw at the situation, I said, you know, something I was wrong. America should actually give money or land or tax breaks or something of that sort. You know, um, yeah, tax you know, breaks. Maybe sound along, good to me. along with college, you know, as well. Um, at the end of the day, well, they actually have a committee in California, which is where we are right now, where there's a committee that's actually supported by by the governor that's exploring reparations for black descendants in California and based on The Economist, because I remember we had put up a post about this and one of the women that was involved on that committee chimed in and said, actually, you know, The Economist that we hired have basically come up with a number of $223,000 per uh, California resident who's a descendant of slavery based on you know, economic unevenness and so forth. Right. You think it'll actually happen? Probably not. <laughs> if it hasn't happened already, if you probably got, not. If you got $223,000 right now right. for reparations, tax-free, right. what would you do with it? Uh, invest it. You know, try to make money, make money. Uh, Yeah. I love what Patrice O'Neill said. He said, you can't give black people reparations. Niggas is just going to, new sneakers, nigga. Well, I mean, Dave Chappelle did the whole skit about reparations. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And he actually played the richest man in the world. <laughs> right. He had won the money through a dice game. Right. And he like bought a baby with cash or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, listen, man, I, I personally hope it does happen. I mean, in fact, we were the first like hip hop outlet to really report on the whole Manhattan Beach situation. Remember the beach, the black beach that was taken by the family that owned it and recently it was given back? You know about that? No. Yeah. So so this family, this family in California in LA owned this beach. And since like black people weren't allowed on public beaches, this was a beach that was basically set up for black people to go enjoy themselves. Right. You know, I mean, and, and sunbathe and, and swim in the ocean and so forth. And the city kept making all these rules. Put like the right black people don't sunbathe. That's y'all. Okay. <laughs> well, the, the, we come with a tan. Right. Yeah. But they do hang out well, in the sun, ahead. right? Yeah. They hang out with the umbrella and yeah, but not the drinks. To, yeah, but not the, not the tan. Judy. Right. Yes. Gotcha. Right. Uh, so anyways, they kept making all these rules, how they couldn't park nearby. People had to walk all this way and so forth. And at one point, they just took the land from them. They took the actual beach from them. Yeah. And then some articles started coming out maybe about a year ago. And we were one of the first ones to really push these articles, you know, in the hip hop space and Shade Room and everyone else started to pick it up as well. And then recently it was announced earlier this year that they're actually giving the beach back to the original family. Right. And then, I mean- they're basically still allowing it to be public use, but they're paying them a substantial rent every month in order, you know, for the lease and so forth in the city. So now they have ownership of it again. Listen, I, I hope I hope it does happen. At the end of the day, uh, the Japanese got reparations. Uh, the Jews have the got Jews got reparations. Yeah. You know, mostly from Germany. You know, what I'm saying I've been to Israel. Like when you see all these like buildings, those like donated by, you know, Mercedes and everything else like that. Um, Native Americans got some form of reparations. You know, they were given land as well as they were able to make casinos, you know, exempt from the various rules. Black people haven't gotten shit. Just is what it is. Someone's going to have to come in and, and say something. Some president. I think in our lifetime it'll happen. I, you know, I, I just wonder why we are so despised and hated uh, as a race all over the world. I, I just, I, 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 you know, I, I just, I, you know, I don't know. I would love to answer to that. Like, why are we so hated? It's just unbelievable to me. You know, I attribute part of it to envy, but, you know, goddamn. I wish I, I, wish I had a real answer to that. Why do you think Jews are hated all over the world, too? I've learned not to uh, say anything about <laughs> Jews. <laughs> and... 
<laughs> the nation of Islam. Oh, uh, man. And well, Russians, because like I said, <laughs> you just vanish. What, I will be sitting up? in this chair and I will slowly vanish. <laughs> what, did, what did Chappelle say on his uh, uh, Saturday Night Live skit? I said, he said, there's two words. The Jews. That have always had a bad. Nothing bad good happens result. after that. The and Jews. Jews. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> no, nah, I'm not. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, speaking of sports, Deion Sanders joined uh, Jackson State, which is the HBCU, as a head coach and really got a lot of people excited. There's also some big recruits from high school that went and, you know, uh, joined the school as well as, as well as other HBCUs. Currently announced that he's actually leaving after a stellar, stellar year to become the head coach of Colorado. And people are upset. Uh, what? At him leaving this HBCU school. Oh, black college. Yes. Right. To go coach. To go coach a non-HBCU school. Right. A bigger salary and, you know, bigger uh, fan base and, you know, and so forth. People are upset over him. Have you, have you heard about this at all? people? Yeah. Dion, do you, baby. Do you, man. Grow. If, yeah. if it's a better opportunity, if it's a better financial situation, why not? Yeah, he's getting older. Yeah. He's, uh, he's probably late 50s at this point. Yeah, you can only live for the public for so long before you got to live for yourself. And I know there's some celebrities who will say outright, fuck the public, period. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not mad at that. Neil Long and uh, I'm a doka. Mm -hmm. Have officially split up after 13 years mm. after the whole uh, Boston Celtics right. drama. She actually did an interview recently, I think in Variety magazine, mm -hmm. where she finally broke her silence about the whole thing. And she said, I think the most heartbreaking thing about all this was seeing my son's face when the Boston Celtics organization decided to make a very public, make a very private situation public. It was devastating. And it still is. He still has moments where it's not easy for him. If you're in the business of protecting women, I'm sorry, no one from the Celtics organization has even called to see if I'm okay, to see if my children are okay, is very disappointing. How old's your son? Uh, well, if they've been together 13 years, I'm thinking probably around 13, 12, something oh, like okay. that. School age kid, taking them to school. Yeah, yeah, you know, listen, man, it comes with it. You know, when you're in the public, you, you know, to, to, to expect fair, uh, in this life and in this business, it's just unrealistic. You know, when you're in the public eye, you know, uh, that comes with it, you know, uh, being scrutinized and being fucked with. And, and it's unfortunate. I'm not saying it's right, but uh, this is the life we've chosen. Uh, when you're famous and you're in the public eye, everything you do, it, it, it seems like, especially again with social media, and everybody having this cell phone and this power in their hands. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a journalist. Everybody's a comedian. Yeah. You know, everybody's a detective. You know, <laughs> so it's it's just ridiculous. It was the feds. It's like we've given everybody a handgun. You know, it's ridiculous, man. Shoot it off. Huh? Yeah. Whatever you feel. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's anarchy. A handgun and a mask. Yeah. And let's not forget that. Right. A handgun and a mask. Right. You can put on your little kitty face. Yep. And go shoot up yep. whatever the fuck you go shoot it's, up. It's it's bedlam. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, it's the blessing and the curse, man. No, listen, I've always said this. I feel that anyone on a social media platform, including Twitter, including Instagram and so forth, they should not be allowed to have an account unless they have a valid driver's license or ID that's tied to their real name. Right. <laughs> so when they go and do some fucked up shit, like I've gotten all types of death threats and I hope your family dies and all that type of shit. We could actually go through the proper channels to report someone like that that's tied to who they really are. You know what I'm saying? So if they're working at Walmart or you know IBM or whatever, these types of actions should have real world consequences. Just like when I say something, I have real world consequences. Everything I tweet, and I've gotten tweets with like 5 million you know, impressions and gone viral on a regular basis on Twitter. That all comes back to me. Right. So why is it fair that someone could go and say the most heinous shit and just go and eat a sandwich afterwards? Right. 
That's what I think. Like I, I, I saw a clip uh, the other day again as I'm going down the rabbit hole of social media, where this dude you could tell he, you know, street dude didn't have listen two front teeth giving commentary about uh, a famous celebrity in their situation. And I just was going, who the fuck are you? <laughs> the, your opinion matters on this. Whose man's is this? Nigga, you ain't got no teeth. <laughs> who the fuck are you? That we need to hear your opinion. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, everybody, everybody can shine now. Yeah, in their own way. And yeah. And have the little echo chamber of their supporters. They'll like, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> and listen, so again, some of, was great. some of the stuff, <laughs> some of the no, stuff I teeth. see genuinely makes me laugh yeah uh but then i see so much shit that i just go oh you, you really thought this was funny <laughs> well uh there's a rumor going around that you hate black women because you saw me post <laughs> <laughs> oh god I, I posted this broad who had her hair it looked like a pineapple on we'll, top of it. We'll go ahead and show the picture now. We'll oh, go ahead and show the picture. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm like, between the hair, the eyebrows, it looked like they were clearly put on with a paint roller, and them pterodactyl ass eyelashes with all that glue and yellow lipstick. Like, who the fuck wears yellow lipstick? Black people, we can't be the canvas to everything. Everything don't look good on us. This bitch looks like a cheeseburger. Are you fucking kidding me? So comedically, as a comic, I'm doing my due diligence. Nobody's above being made fun of. Yes, black women, you too. And a couple comments, you just say you hate black women. Shut the fuck up. So you think I, I love black women. I came from a black woman. So you think that just because I'm making fun of this particular woman who happens to be black, I hate all black women? Like, sisters, I love you. Mm, mm. Turn the fucking volume down. Some of y'all are so ridiculously oversensitive. It's ridiculous. If I see a nigga uh, dressed in all red from shoes to socks to, to pants to jacket to a hat and he's fat, yes, I'm going to think this nigga comes with his own barbecue sauce. <laughs> yes. I'm going to make fun of him. Okay. And I've made fun of myself. Right. Uh, how's the whole Lizzo thing holding up? The people still getting you on? Nah. Getting on you for that? Nah. You know, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm actually crafting some material around that whole situation. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, as I'm struggling to lose weight, uh, God has been cruel to me with my fatness. Because most people that are fat, they're fat all over. Well, you know what's interesting? But let me just say this. Oh, no, go ahead, sorry. I don't really have a fat face. I don't have really have fat arms. And my jeans are baggy, so it's hard to tell. But I got really skinny, thin legs. If you would have... All my fat is right here in my midsection. If you would have seen me on the toilet butt naked, I look like Kermit the Frog taking a shit. Well, there's actually a picture of you when you were younger. Fine in a motherfucker. And sex, you ain't got to show it to me. I know yeah, what I look like. <laughs> and listen, even though I've gained weight and whatnot, I'm still a sexy motherfucker, man. I got swagger. I got confidence. That's why, again, I don't want to re rehash what I did last time I, I was on here. But again, it kills me when women, and I and I'm, again, I'm crafting this in my material. I, I say, again, women, Y'all are like children when it comes time to get angry. You don't deal in logic and sense and rationale. You deal in anger and emotion. To somehow think that I have a hard time getting pussy based on what? My resume is 32 years long. There's dudes that work at pay less shoes that get pussy. Yeah. I'm not that nigga. I got money. I got fame. I've been on TV. I've been in movies. I've been in magazines. I've traveled, did tours in Europe, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Africa. I got confidence, I'm swagger, intelligent. Being funny is a skill. Mm. Being mentally sharp is a skill, and they're both aphrodisiacs. Well, and I'm a, nice with it. I'll, I'll say this, right? I've said this in other interviews, I think after our interview. I think, and I don't say this very often, because I have a, whatever, 90% male audience, yeah. right? So I cater to my male audience. 
But I will say this. I feel that people constantly talking about Lizzo, you know, and I'm not just talking about you. Like, for example, Kanye went on a whole rant about right. Lizzo and how they're promoting this unhealthy lifestyle right. and so forth. I feel is somewhat sexist because in the same breath, you have DJ Khaled, okay. who's actually heavier right. than Lizzo, who actually brags about eating lobsters every day. Yeah. Cooked in, you know, drowning in butter, yeah. right? And has his, and constantly has his belly hanging out, yeah. his butt crack showing and yeah. so forth. Everybody loves DJ Khaled. No one says, hey, Khaled, you should lose some weight. You're unhealthy. Right. Right. You're promoting this unhealthy look. Right. The same thing they're saying about Lizzo, they are not saying about Khaled. Kanye is on Khaled's new album. Everyone loves Khaled. No one is saying the same things it's about It's a different him. stigma with men versus women. But but it's the same Unfairly. it's the same argument though, right? People are saying Lizzo is unhealthy and, and so forth, and you shouldn't be promoting this this kind of like, you know, heavy set person when it's being done with men with no repercussions. Biggie no one was calling Biggie fat and you know unhealthy and so forth. I mean, people weren't even talking shit about Big Pun, and Big Pun died because of his weight. And yeah. like how Fat Joe like? literally before he lost some weight. And his name still is Fat Joe. Yeah. Yeah. It's in his name. Yeah. It's in his name. So honestly, I feel like you either have to, as a whole, either leave Lizzo alone or have that same energy for her male counterparts, which people do not have. That's all I'm saying. So if you're going to say a Lizzo joke, you should do a DJ Khaled joke in the same way. But breath. wait a minute, though. But women on social media do uh, jokes about fat men with, with carte blanche. Name a fat man that has been ha has been singled out to the, to the extent of a Lizzo. Name one man. One man. Man, I'm starting to think you have a vagina, nigga. I do not the have a vagina. The way you crusade for women like this is ridiculous. Men are, men are ridiculed by women all the time on social media. Name a man. Who? DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, Biggie. The difference is they can still fuck. Not saying a fat chick can't. Lizzo's fucking. She's got okay. a boyfriend. All right, but it's it's the stigma. Is di Let me quote again, and I and I do this often because mm -hmm. I'm such a fan of his, and he was such a comedic juggernaut. Uh, Patrice O'Neal, he goes, uh, a rich, retarded man can still get pussy. A rich, retarded bitch is fucked. So when you got money and you got swagger and you got confidence. But they're both fucking, so I don't. No, no. He didn't mean it like that. He meant a retarded rich bitch yeah. is fucked, meaning she ain't getting no dick. She's fucked. A retarded rich man is still fucking. A, a man will have sex with a retarded female. Yes, he will. Yes, you're not. You're not getting. I'm not, I'm not getting it. Okay, you're not getting what he's saying. What I'm saying is, a dude will. Come, yes, dudes will fuck anything. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's dudes what I'm saying. Anything. But who you dudes. fucking? Who you keep is different. Right. Who you fucking? Who you keep is different. Dude, dude. The line to fuck a woman is around the block. The line to want to stay with a woman is two men deep. Okay. How many retarded men? Well, is retarded even even a word we should be using? You're mentally disabled man. You're how putting, many? How many? You're of these putting men? the onus is on the re retarded factor, which it's not about that. It's just a segue into telling you that it's unfair that men can get away with shit that women can't when they have money. Well, you see a lot of rich women, for example, share. <laughs> And her new boyfriend, Amber Rose's baby uh, father, uh, what is it, uh, Andrew Alexander, a Alexander Edwards, she is 76 and he is 36. There's a 40-year age difference between these two. Right. And she seems very happy. She getting some young dick. What's her name? Cher. What's her name? Cher. One more time. What's Cher. her name? Cher. Okay. She share. Right. She's a star. Right. She has a legacy. Exactly. She's rich. Exactly. Yeah. The 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 twenty yes. year old talking about the, the twenty year old. He's going to invest in his future. Thirty six. 
36. He's investing in his future. Just like a younger woman will get an older man, like an Anna Nicole Smith will get a guy that's got one foot in the grave and be right there with him. Right. Because as soon as the other foot get in there, she got the dough. Right. Which she, I don't think she actually got. But because the family fought it. But what I'm saying is you have a similar effect with rich women and rich men. Women, rich women get young, attractive guys, just like rich men get younger, attractive females, right? Not at the same ratio. Not, not, not at the, the same, same ratio, but, but it, it does happen. It does happen. Well, white tigers exist, motherfucker. <laughs> Albino gorillas exist. Man, That's see, not the norm. You see all these. Ain't, ain't no wealthy ass woman wondering, where am I going to get some dick? There is a dude willing to step up and live that lifestyle. But most with her. women, listen. Uh, if you're Shaquille O'Neal, you will fuck the bad bitch that works at Burger King just as quickly as you will fuck a Halle Berry. If you're Beyonce, she's only going to fuck the nigga that's on her level. She's not fucking the cute dude at Burger King. Depending on what the age is. If she's 60 years old then that might be single, di- okay, but single, she gonna fuck the Burger King dude if he can lay some dick. Maybe. Maybe. And that more, that's more about her going, I'm 60 now. I don't have the option that I used to have. Man, look, Britney Spears got some dude who's like a personal trainer. In fact, she had babies with her backup dancer. Like, it, r- rich women constantly get with dudes. It happens, yeah. but that, in terms of the ratio, that's not the norm. Well, I, I think it comes down to the age. I think an older, wealthy woman will have her boy toys around just like older, wealthy men will have his girl toys around. You know what I'm saying? I think it, it goes both ways. So you think it's totally equal? I don't think it's totally equal because I think women have a different sexual drive. What would you say is the ratio? I don't know, maybe five to one. Okay, white tigers exist, nigga. That's five to one. Five to one. That's not the norm. So for every five orange tigers, there's a white white tiger. Yes! (laughs) But, you know, you also got to understand that men, you know, we all know this, men could just fuck just to fuck. Women want more romance and the whole thing, which takes a lot more time and relationships and everything else like that. A motherfucker could go and fuck four different women in one day and go on with his business. Women don't generally do that. Women don't generally go around just gobbling dick. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Dude, you know this shit. Why are you acting like you don't know this? <laughs> well, uh, and listen, it's, again, it's unfair. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. The standard of beauty for a woman is like, you know, young, the body's tight, the skin is tight, you know, are the breasts perky enough? Men aren't held to the same standard. Now, I'm not saying you got to, you could be Quasimodo and just think you plowing through pussy, but if you got some swag, if you got some confidence, if you got something about you, say what you will. Money. Okay, but even, even if you took the money away, Biggie, Niggas from Bed Stuy. Niggas from Brooklyn. Did you see? He's from New York. Uh, He's got a swagger. Look at, look at, okay. Jay Z. Jay Z's a New York nigga. He's a hustler. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got a swag. So even though people will go, wow, Beyonce is with that nigga, he ain't, you know, he to the to the to the visual eye, he ain't no, he ain't no Shamar Moore. No, he's a legend. Right. He's a he, legend okay. and everyone knows that. But, All right, but, but what I'm saying. But, but 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 look at Biggie's. Baby mother when he was a drug dealer in Brooklyn, and then look at Faith Evans, and you will see he fucked either way. He fucked either way. He fucked either way. But, but the caliber of women are very different when he was Biggie and he was Listen, the rapper. He was potentially rich Vlad, and so forth. When you got game and you got swagger and you know how to play tongue tennis with a broad, yeah, and you know how to play the mind games with a woman, I'm telling you, ugly niggas fuck. Right. Fat niggas fuck. Yeah. Bald but, niggas fuck. But broke dudes have a harder time fucking. No okay. Matter, no matter how they look. Oh, the no challenge. No matter how they look. And and most women might fuck a broke dude, but they probably won't stay with him. They probably won't stay with him. Well, there's a lot of women. bitches. Whoa. There's a lot of bitches with niggas who ain't shit because the dick game is ridiculous. Yes, but there's more women that will value stability over a broke motherfucker. Well, of course that's what you want. Well, but men are different. A man, a man doesn't necessarily want a woman who is, you know, financially stable. They'll come in and say, "I'll take care of that." Like I remember, there's this whole debate about like, 
should should uh, a man and a woman you know be paying 50 50 in relationships and so forth the last time i was 50 50 with a woman was in college my girlfriend all through college we were broke college students we were 50 50 shared an apartment and so forth at the point that i graduated got my first job i've always taken care of 100 percent any woman that's ever that i've ever been in a serious relationship with you've chosen to do that i've chosen to that's do that. nice yeah I would do that because I'm tr I'm old school. Yeah, I believe a man I've, should. I've always been. There's, I've never asked for half the rent, half the pills. For the record, the no relationship is fifty fifty. That's bullshit. Yeah, exactly. And, and secondly, I'm again. I'm a traditionalist. I'm yeah. old school. I believe that if a man brings home the bacon, he shouldn't have to fry it too. Right. That's your job. Right. If I if I take care of the house, take care of the bills, make sure you need for nothing, make sure your hair is done, your nails are done, mm -hmm. you got your feet done, you can go shopping, then I expect you to do all the other shit. Take care of the crib, suck my dick and fuck me upon snap request. Well, no woman has to fuck you up on snap request. Yeah, I'm, I, I live by the I live by you the I live by the Arab, who, I live who by the Arab rules, nigga. Get on it. That's how mystical end up uh you know, potentially doing life in prison right now. No, that's not how you, no, 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 don't, don't connect those two. Stop it. Don't stop it. Okay. But the thing for me has always been, I don't give a shit about bills and whatever. If I have the right woman in my corner, I'll end up making way more money and so forth. So it becomes a non-issue. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You know, and th that's just been me. Now, listen, if, you, but then again, I've, you know, I've been broke, you know, certain times in my life, but usually I didn't have girlfriends during that time. But, you know, coincidence? No, not a coincidence. Oh. Not a coincidence. But you know, I didn't. I knew I couldn't have a girlfriend during that time. I was too busy trying to get my shit in order. But at the end of the day, you know, I know. You know, if you're financially struggling, if you're working at you know a nine to five minimum wage type job, then yeah, you and your lady splitting fifty fifty is not. You know, I would consider that unreasonable. But I've always been a hundred zero. That's just been me. And whatever they make, and a lot of times they work in the business with me and end up making, everyone ends up making more money anyways. But, you know, I get it. Well, recently, uh, Gabrielle Union mm -hmm. uh, did an interview and Boosie's name came up. <laughs> right. Now, Boosie has made some comments about uh, her uh, stepdaughter, stepson, however right. you want to frame it, uh, Zaya. Uh, who's transgender. And uh, when Boosie's name came up, Gabriel pretty much, you know, called him gay. She said, yeah, he, he doth that. protest uh, too yeah, much uh, uh, yeah. and he's got a lot of dick on his mind. I know Boosie well, very well. I've known him for about 20 years yeah. at this point, yeah. right? <laughs> I can tell you, I've never got any sort of gay vibe from that him shit. Women do all. that. Listen, women always you're gay. Yeah, you're gay. You got a little dick. You got a little dick. You can't fuck. That's that. You know, nah, 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 nah. That's that shit I was talking about. Yeah. When women get upset, mm -hmm. they don't deal in logic, sense, or rationale. They deal in anger and emotion. Now, I'm not. It's not my place to tell anybody how to raise a child or, or, or you know, uh, whatever decisions they make. That's their business within their home. Uh, do I think there was some validity to what Boozy was saying? Me personally, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so if Gabrielle Union takes out the emotion and the anger, whether she wants to have that conversation or not, or whether she wants to give any thought, serious thought or consideration to his points that some people may deem as valid, that would be the mature thing to do. That would be that would be the sensible thing to do. And this is why I'm going again. Mm -hmm. When women get upset, it's no sense, no logic, or no rationale. It's anger and emotion. Well, Boosie actually responded. He said, the whole world know I love women and the world know your husband loves dick. I hope All you right. don't think black <laughs> folks look at y'all like a power couple. They don't. I'd refuse to talk about y'all in interviews, and here you go. Go bang him with that dildo and wait on a script, you little white girl. Well, I didn't know that second part existed. <laughs> well, there's more. He also said, women, you better leave me alone. How dare you challenge a ghetto hero's manhood? You wrong. I don't have the time for this. I'm trying to have peace in my life and stay alive. Uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, 
uh, As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson. It's a scene in there that I absolutely love. I think it's one of the greatest scenes in cinematic history. He goes to his editor's office because he's, he's an author. Mm-hmm. And as he's leaving the office, uh, they show this blonde kind of bimbo-ish secretary just looking at him with these googly eyes. So at one point, as he He's waiting on the elevator. She goes, oh, my God, can I please ask you a question? He rolls his eyes and goes, oh, like, here we go. And she goes, just please, one question. Uh, it's not going to hurt. He, I, I think it's wonderful. And she says to him, how you're able to go and get inside of a woman and know what's going on in here and here. She points at her mind and her heart. And then he rolls his eyes again. Oh, Jesus. So she goes, please, let me just ask you this one question. How do you write for women so well? And he goes, I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. (laughs) So this is what I'm saying. Like sometimes with women, the moment you hit a trigger, rather than take a deep breath, even if you don't like what I'm saying, be an adult. If you want to engage, let's have the conversation. But Come from a place of thought, logic, sense, and rationale. Don't tell me my dick is too small. Don't tell me I can't fuck. Don't tell me I'm gay. Because that's you being a child. Because you're upset. And you want to throw a temper tantrum. Yeah, I mean, listen. I've got arguments with women. I've had all these things thrown at me. I've been called gay. And right. I can't fuck. And this, that, and the third. I, that's, I why, that's why, again, Vlad, when, when, when the women that were mad at me about the Lizzo thing kept saying... You can't fuck. No woman wants you. You're unattractive and unfunny. And I'm just going, but my resume is 32 years in stand-up. Successfully, consistently, TV, movies, travel the world, uh, late night talk shows, in magazines. I'm funny, I'm intelligent, swagger. I got money and fame. What about those ingredients suggest I can't get pussy? Make that make sense. From a logical realistic, realistic standpoint. Make that make sense. That doesn't make sense. Well, I think that most people, and I joined, you know, I became DJ Vlad when I was almost 30 years old. I was 29 when I decided to become a full-time DJ and it took me some years to kind of build up and, you know, I'm now 49. I, I think most people don't realize what fame actually gives you if they don't have any themselves, right? They don't understand how having a, when you meet a woman, if she already knows who you are before you meet her, right. it somewhat flips the, di- the di- uh, dynamic, right? Because they now pursue you more so than they you pursue them. It's a foot in the door. It's a foot in the door. And sometimes it, it even... It's the door switches. It's a revolving door almost. Or, or here's the curse though. Some the stigma. Some women go, Oh, you're famous. I ain't no groupie. I ain't gonna be another notch on your belt. Yeah, but they're well, already why, telling you, you they're right, kind of but, you, but, but, but why make that assumption that that's what you're gonna be? Mm-hmm. That that's how I'm gonna see you uh, unless you do something to make me see you that way. Mm-hmm. I always say being a famous dude is like being a, 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 a pretty bitch with big tits. It's, it's, it's the shoe in. It's the foot in the door. But just because you got your foot in the door don't mean you can get all the way in. Now, yeah. once you get your foot in the door, now you got to finesse. Right. You can also put your now foot you in the talk. <laughs> right. Now you got to, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to win them over. Yeah. Being famous is just the introduction. But it's, an, it's definitely more an introduction than to go up to a woman completely cold and right. try to sell yourself. That's a hard, that's, that's that, harder. That's a whole lot harder. Right. That's a whole lot harder. And let me tell you, like, and also the fact that you know who you are and what you've accomplished and the amount of fans and viewers you have gives you a certain level of confidence. Like, I feel like I could walk up to any woman, like really, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, because I, I'm Vlad, Vlad TV, DJ Vlad, whatever. Like, I, I have that in my head. Now, if I'm delusional and the person doesn't give a shit, it just is what it is. But I didn't have that same kind of confidence when I was Vlad, the computer programmer. You know what right. I'm saying? I just did it. You know, I was the same person. I was younger and probably in better shape, but, you know, even had similar money at certain points. But it's different when you're actually 
already known. And I think that a lot of the women that probably attacked you don't understand what it's like and how things change or they're not putting themselves in your shoes and how they act around celebrities themselves. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if Chris Brown was in the room, they'd all be going crazy. Like women literally pass out at yeah. Chris Brown concerts. Right? Well, when you talked about R. Kelly, here's a guy that we know did what he did, mm -hmm. but for the hardcore women that are R. Kelly fans, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. At all. Doesn't matter. If they saw R. Kelly in person, they'd lose their shit. Right. And might even give him some pussy. Might even. Even knowing that he did what he did. Probably give him some pussy. Right. <laughs> well, you made a post about Will Smith. Which, oh, about the emancipation thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about, uh, you know, the interviewer brought up the whole slapping thing yes. and so forth. And you said, oh, my fucking God, it is not that damn serious. They act like this man blew up a pet shop full of kittens. Right. Why even mention it? it's old news? Plus, they know the black community is in such a rush to see another slave movie. Right. Well, Will seems like he's back, though. I mean, we'll see how this movie does. Yeah, I love how everyone acted as if, like I said, that's what it wasn't like he blew up a nursery. It was on question of time. It would simmer down and he'd be back. And, you know, uh, what he did, it was extremely forgivable. Uh, you know, he didn't kill nobody. He didn't assault anybody, <laughs> a woman. He he no, no, I, mean, I, I meant to say it. No, but what I'm, no, no, I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. I mean, okay. sexually assault a woman. Right. Uh, that is true. You know, uh, so there it is. You know? Do, do you see a problem, you know, when you said another slave movie? Don't you think that it's somewhat of a positive that they continuously make high-budget slave movies to just remind people what happened? No, but the point is we have other stories to tell. The stories... Well, it's are, not well, like that's the only black movies that are being made. I, I know, but but to constantly, you know, profit off of our trauma and our pain those movies we we know those movies exist they're out there we've made an abundance of those there are so many more interesting stories we could tell autobiographical stories about uh black entrepreneurs and 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 black leaders and 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 black su success stories and you know there's just other aspects of our culture well, that, that we could talk about and, and i agree with you and if those were the only movies or the majority of the movies that were made, I, I, I would say that's an extremely good point. But but here's what I think happens, right? I think, well, think about this. I just don't want to see Will Smith try to do another accent. Okay. Because the last concussion, tear the truth. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? You and I grew up learning about slavery and, and being very aware of, of what happened and so forth. But before the movie Roots came out, slavery was sort of tucked under the rug. Roots was a, a comp like when, when Alex Haley started to write the, the short stories in Reader's Digest that ultimately became the TV series Roots, nobody was actually talking about this. History books in high school, we're not talking about slavery. You know, I mean, white America was really trying to pretend like it never happened. And a lot of white Americans trying to still pretend like it, done, like exactly. it never happened. Exactly. So when Roots came out, it was a phenomenon. I mean, in fact, like, I remember the, the, the TV station, ABC or CBS or whoever, didn't even think it was going to do well. And it became a huge hit. And then that opened sort of a floodgate for these types of films and so forth. Like when you look at, when you compare it to, for example, Jewish history, like you had Schindler's List, which was like a very important movie, but you haven't had a lot of Holocaust films. I don't think you've had any Holocaust films since then. And this is why you have the Kanye's of the world saying the Holocaust didn't really happen. Oh, six million Jews, that, 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 those numbers are inflated. Like, you know, or some people say the Holocaust never happened. And it, it was basically Jews tricking the world to, to get the state of Israel. So when you don't have films that remind people and illustrate these things, people will tend to forget and people will start to rewrite history. That's all I'm saying. So I actually, from I, my I, point I, of view, I, 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 I'm actually supportive of these types of slave movies to get it back in people's faces again. To say, Would you be less supportive of other stories though? But I'm very supportive of all stories. I told you I love But Friday. all stories aren't being told. Okay. I mean, you had 
one of the biggest films of the year, Wakanda. That's fiction. Okay, you had, uh, was the warrior, the warrior queen? The woman king. Woman king, sorry. That was an actual story based on actual real events, right? Okay. Name another one. Don't go to the computer. Don't go to the computer. <laughs> well, I don't watch that many movies in the okay. theater. You know what I'm saying? But I just named you a big one. That was a big, high-budget film. Which was recent. Recent. Okay, name me one from last year or the year before or the year before that. There we go. boy. I mean, name me a, a, a film about Asians that... We're not ago. talking about Asians. We're talking about <laughs> you us. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're talking saying, about us, though. I, I'm just saying, or, or Spanish people, or so forth. I mean, I we've had really... we've had 12 Years a Slave. We've had Harriet. We've had these movies. We've had Roots. Yeah. We had a remake of Roots. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, come on, man. All right. Listen. This is this is ultimately. We've had Selma. We've had. Uh, uh, what was that, that was in slavery. That was. no, but it's still just black strife, yeah. trauma. Till just came out. Well, isn't really like some of the best films about trauma and strife? Yeah, but the best films are usually about that. The best films are whatever you make them, based on writing, production, yeah. direction, performances by the actors. Yes. All that, the script, yes, the director, yes, a lot of magic and luck has to go into a great film. I, I, I get it, but me personally, listen, if you want to get things in people's faces, like movies are very powerful, man. Movies are. Have very you ever powerful. seen the the six part uh, PBS documentary uh, Eyes on the Prize? I don't think so. Have you ever seen the PBS documentary MLK Still Our Eyes? I don't remember the last time I watched PBS anything. Okay, have you seen uh, the James Baldwin Netflix documentary? I did watch uh, that. I Am Your Negro? I watched that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff out there, yeah. but you also have to want to. We can't force white America to look at itself in the mirror. They have to want to. And a lot of white people don't want to. Well, a lot of uh, important black films, like, for example, the Central Park Five. Yes. High-budget film. Mm -hmm. by a black female director. Yep. Uh, a, a Duva a Avery? Uh, Duva. Ava Duva. Du yeah, something like that. I'm sorry if I'm messing up her name. Yeah. Uh, you know, won tons of awards, yeah. critical acclaim, put the actual Central Park Five into a celebrity spotlight, allowed right. them to, to do, you know, various projects and so forth. I think there's a lot of dope projects, man. You know, and I, you know, listen, I, I probably watch more black cinema than the average white person just because of the business that I'm in. Right. <laughs> just is what it is. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a lot of dope projects that come out. Yeah. A lot. A lot. And um, I'm just know, saying. I'm going to watch I'm, I'm, I'm just saying we have so many films where we're constantly the victims. Let's have some films where we're the victors. Did you say you don't have that? That's based in fact, not fiction. Every Eddie Murphy film. Fiction. Dolomite. A horrible example. <laughs> Why is that a horrible example? Have you seen the Dolomite I, movies? I watched. Well, horrible. No, I watched. Well, I watched some of the Dolomite original films, which were right. not that great. Horrible. But the Eddie Murphy one was pretty good. Okay. He's and doing a spoof. Was, uh, it's this, a spoof. It's not really a spoof. I, th I think it was a, kind of an autobiography. I think it was fairly accurate. It, it, I hadn't seen it, but if he did- Oh, we, yo, you haven't watched Eddie right, Murphy? Right, but Dolomite? no, but when you say if it's fairly accurate, then that means it's a spoof. I mean, it showed how low budget the films were. How that, bad that the, the acting Dolomite. was. Yeah, exactly. You could see the boom mic in the right. shot. <laughs> yeah. Right, he punches the guy and he flies yeah, across the room. Yeah, yeah, not quality shit. Right, but- There's a great documentary out right now that you should check out on Netflix called Is This Black Enough for You? And it and it's and it chronicles I think I saw it on my on my on my feed. Yeah, yeah. it chronicles uh black cinema from the uh silent film era all the way till today. Mm. All the way to today. I'll watch it. It's great. I'll watch it. Well you know the great Chuck D of Public Enemy uh actually went on Twitter recently and he called for the ban of the N-word on Twitter. Agree or disagree? I have to say I disagree uh, because that falls under free speech. And the moment we start trying to censor speech, then where does the where do we draw the line? Because then that means comedically 
I can't say what I want to say. On Twitter, not in real life, on this particular platform. Oh, just on that particular... Pl- just, yeah, not in, not in society. You're never going to be able to, to pull that off. But you know what I'm saying? In terms of on this particular platform, on Twitter, which, you know, listen, at the end of the day, Kanye's banned right now for putting a swastika, you know, in one of his tweets. It was right. like a swastika inside of a, you know, a Jewish star. Right. So a swastika there, he's now banned off Twitter again for I don't know how long. Right. Uh, if you put, you know, very uh, degrading uh, pictures of, you know, stereotypical racist type things, they will ban your account. Like people have tweeted me some real foul shit. I reported the tweet and then I get, a you know, an email saying that this person's account has been suspended. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. I do that every so often when, when I just feel it's a little extreme. Uh, so do you feel that the N-word, because right now, if it is allowed, it's not that only black people can say it, right? Any race could usually could use the N-word on know. Twitter I, I, and it could generally be okay. So should you just ban it all across the I board? I think that's a slippery slope, man. It is. That's so why I'm I, asking the question. Yeah, I... Because I, you yeah, use it in your own speech. I use it in my stand-up. Yeah. You know? Uh, remember, remember at one point, Richard Pryor stopped using it. Remember there was that whole thing he went to Africa? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That whole thing where yeah. it was like... On his live on a Sunset Strip. Yeah. Uh, I saw all these beautiful black professional people. And from that day on. Because there aren't any. Yeah. And from that point on, he said he stopped using that word. And this is the guy that. I don't know if he was was the biggest comic of his day. You know know what I'm saying? He was just funny after that. Mm, That's interesting. (laughs) You know, Richard, Richard was the streets. Richard was a realness, a rawness. And in being that, uh, when used correctly, the word is powerful, man. And it makes a point. And certain points have to be made with certain words. You know, I always said there's an art to cursing. Richard Pryor, when he cursed, Eddie Murphy, when he cursed, Dave Chappelle, when he curses, Chris Rock, when he curses, and they say the word nigga, I don't hear that word that way. I don't hear the curses that way. To me, it's part of a poetry. Versus, and, and I and I say this with all due respect, mwah, mwah, mwah. I love Monique. But when Monique curses, I hear the curses. That motherfucker, baby. And that motherfucker, fuck that motherfucker, fucker, baby. That, I'm not saying Monique's not funny. Monique is a beast. I love Monique. She's one of the queens. But to me, I don't, I don't, I don't feel poetry. When she said, when she curses, I feel, I hear curses. I hear effect. When Eddie, Richard, you know, Eddie, when Richard did the joke about the exorcist, well, take, bitch, take the cross out your pussy. <laughs> that to me, I didn't hear a curse. I didn't hear pussy like that. I heard an inflection and a rhythm that Richard knows how to make that comedic music. Eddie knows how to make comedic music. When, when, when Dave Chappelle was on SNL, and like I said, he goes, Kanye West said, I can say anti-Semitic things and they won't drop me. Pause. They dropped that nigga immediately. I didn't, that had a, that didn't feel like. Cursing, yeah. Yes. It, it, you know, there's a, there's an art to that shit. I feel you. I feel you, but the word itself is a slippery slope. You of know, course because, it is. Because, you know, I mean, it's listen. the most dangerous word in the human language. I remember I interviewed, who was it? Was it G Herbo back in the day? And you know he uses that word a lot in his uh, in his songs. And I said, when you perform at concerts, and a lot of times it's mostly white fans, do you have a problem with them singing along? He's like, no, not at all, not at all. But some people would be offended. Let me tell you, a something. white fan rapping along the future. Right. Back in the eighties, early nineties, there used to be a black female comedian named Phyllis Yvonne Stickney. It's either Stickney or Stickley. She was in the movie uh, New Jack City as the uh, prosecuting attorney during the court scene with Wesley Snipes, a.k.a. Nino Brown. I forget what talk show she was on, but when talking about the atrocities of the Holocaust versus slavery, she basically ended her rant with uh, the Holocaust was on film. Our suffering and our atrocity 
was not on film. Yeah. Cut to, I, I sent out a post where Bill Duke, the director, was talking about a book. Uh, pull, if you could pull that up for me, something about Sanctuary. It's a book that contains photos of lynchings. This is wh whose book? Bill, that's not Bill Duke's book. It's, I posted it on my post, Instagram. It was my interview. Oh, was that your interview? You said drums in the background? Sanctuary, the name of the book. Yeah. Okay. But that, but did you notice the drum set in the background? I didn't. It's the same I room. didn't. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he, he's Duke. talking about this book that has photographs of lynchings. And in the interview, he goes on to explain- It's how, called Without Sanctuary, the, the History of Lynching in the USA. Okay. He said, wasn't just men, it was women, it was children. Yeah. There used to be a time where, I forget the exact term, where certain parts of this country would throw black babies into alligator pits to be eaten by alligators. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that word comes with such a fucking horrific, murderous, bloody history that I understand why, you know, Chuck D would say that. Uh, and, and Chuck has used that word in some of his songs before. Not yeah. profusely right. like other rappers, you know, during right. his era, but every so often he would, he would drop that word. You know, when you get into race arguments with people on social media, one of the points that a lot of non-black people like to make is that everybody suffered. Everybody's going through shit. Okay, I'm fine. Everybody has. But black people are the Babe Ruth of suffering. We're the Babe Ruth of fucked up shit. Babies thrown in the alligator pits. What kind of evil is that? That you would want to throw a baby to an alligator. Well, yeah, I mean, in that same uh, in that same interview with Bill Duke, he talked about um, and this is something that I think his grandparents had actually seen, um, called like N word barbecues, where they would actually nigga barbecues. Yeah, they would barbecue an actual black, black person. Man, yeah, and they would sit around like on a rotisserie on a rotisserie. Yeah, that was a real thing. There's a book that was written by these two white gentlemen called Without Sanctuary. If you ever get a chance to read it, it is one of the most profoundly disturbing books I've ever seen in my life. It, it's, a, it's a pictorial history of lynchings and what they used to call nigger barbecues. I'm talking about children, women, male adults, lynched, and then they used to put us alive on spits with a fire beneath it and turn us and roast us until we dehydrated. And they'd pick up pieces of the bodies and hundreds of whites would be standing and taking pictures with a body piece in their hand. They have the pictures, they show the pictures in the book. Man, and, and again, atrocity is atrocity. Well, yeah, and, but uh, but goddamn, you know, I, I just you know, I don't want I don't want to demean anybody, any other culture's atrocity. Well, well, yeah. but Jesus, no, no, I feel you. I mean, for example, like the, the head of the ADL was on the Breakfast Club recently, and he said that the way the ADL was even formed it was around a hundred years ago, where a Jewish person was lynched in that same manner. They literally cooked him, mm. and, and actually, you know, sat around and took pictures and so forth. And that had just never happened before in, in Jewish society. And there was such an outrage that they formed the ADL around that specific event. But this was happening on a regular basis with black Americans. You, you see what I'm saying? It was like such a shock to one community that it happened to one of theirs, whereas another community was like, oh, it was a Tuesday. See, like my, one of my good comedic friends, another guy who used to open for me, Nicaraguan uh, guy by the name of Neri Sines, he saw when I reposted the Bill Duke thing and he called me and he said, God damn, like, dude, I knew about black people going through shit, but not like this. And, and to Bill Duke's point, when he's going, white people that tell us get over it. It's like, clearly y'all haven't done the homework. Clearly you don't know because I have a hard time believing that if you're a human being with real flesh and bone and blood and a mind and a soul and a heart. If you know that, how do you just tell somebody get over that? Well, yeah, because this is what Kanye 
recently said about Hitler. He said, Jews need to get over Hitler. They need to just get over it. They need to just forgive him. Get over it. And it's like, you can't tell. And everyone's like, oh, that sounds like <laughs> white people I, saying I saw get a clip, over I saw slavery. a clip like, where uh, I guess some of the Israelites were def- were at the Barclays Israelite, Center. Black Israelites, yeah. Right, black. And, they, and they're, you know, they, my niggas be loud, boy. I, I always said, maybe people to hear your message, if you tone down the Pirates of the Caribbean costumes, hey, get a be- better speaker system. Because you, you motherfuckers just sound like you're yelling. And the white pig and the devil motherfucker in the caves of the Bolivia. Like, nigga, just, just, you know. But so that one of the dude is standing on the crate and he's delivering his message. And I guess he's talking to a white Jewish person. And towards the very end of the clip, the guy goes, so all the Jewish people that were killed in the Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. And the black guy basically said at the end of it, good, like good. And I just went, Jesus. It's like if you even if you want me to try to hear your message and take something from it positive, mm-hmm. when you do that, you just killed the whole thing. You just shat on the whole thing. I, I think that most people have problems connecting to pain to a group that they don't identify with themselves. I, I think that that's just unfortunately almost human nature. But even if you don't I, identify because you're not part that, of that race, part of that community, right? You're still a human there's being. No connection, right? But you're still a human being. So how how is it that the human being in you doesn't go, wow? Do you want to know how? I'll tell you exactly how. Mr. Beast, you know who that is? No. Mr. Beast is the richest YouTuber in the world. At 24 years old, he's worth <laughs> over a billion dollars. He does these huge, high production videos where, like, he gets a bunch of people to compete, and whoever wins, like, wins a house. <laughs> or he redid the Squid Games. Like, he's got, like, I don't know, like 50 million YouTube subscribers. He, he's an absolute monster on YouTube. The, the richest person on YouTube in the Black world. Black or white? He's white. Damn. He put up a Twitter poll that got almost 2 million votes. He said, if you got $10,000 cash, but someone in the world would die, would you take it? The 10000 Yes or no? Yes. You you get ten thousand dollars, but somebody gonna die. But somebody gonna die for you taking that money. Right. Close to two million people voted on this Twitter poll. Did they would take the money? What percentage do you think it was? Yes versus no. Probably what ninety ten. In which way? Take the money. Forty five percent of the people said they would take the money. Fifty five percent said they would not. Almost 50-50. Right. It's interesting to see how many people felt that a human life was worth $10,000. Dude, I saw the movie Till, and I had already, you know, seen several other things about it, but I saw the movie Till. About about Emmett Emmett Till? Emmett Till. Yeah. Uh, Only one white person was in the theater. And I just, you know... And I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen the actual photograph, even though I know that in this movie, they're going to show it and it's a movie. And obviously that part of it is fake. I still, and I, and I want to say this, I, I love white people, man. I love all people. Right. But in the moment, in that moment, in that theater, in the dark, big screen, they show that, and then they show the the actress, the, the the wonderful. I wish I could get her name. Her performance as the mom losing it as a mother would. I said to myself, and I said to uh, Andy Steinberg again, my white uh, co-host and comedian feature, Danielle Deadweiler. Yes, I turned to him and I said, "White people are some evil motherfuckers." Now, that's a broad statement. And again, I know not all. And, and I'll say this. Even again, when I get into race com- wars with people on Instagram and I'll post like with the Bill Duke post. 
Yeah. One guy said, uh, yeah, that's what happens when you fuck with them devils and you eat with them devils, them devils, them devils. And I said, bro, I understand the anger, especially when you see those photos. But turn the volume down because historically they have been white people who have given their lives to our causes, bled with us, died with us. Yeah. So again, I know not all white people, but in that moment when they show his face or what's supposed to be his face and, and her, she breaks down as a mom. In that moment, I just went, white people are some evil motherfuckers to do that to a child. Well, that and, but, a, but then, you that know. That was a very evil act, which nobody, nobody could deny. Listen, yeah, I, know my, I know my parents love me and they would never hurt me. There've been times when I thought they was gonna kill me because, <laughs> you know, black parents, when it's time to get, get that ass whooping, it gets serious. But there have been times when my mother would whoop me and I would piss myself. But I knew I wasn't going to die. Right. I'm going, can you imagine the terror of a child that knows this ain't my relative. This is a white dude calling me boy, nigga, grabbing me in the middle of the night where I, I'm, you know, when you motherfucker jolt you out to sleep, you're frazzled. Yeah. Can you imagine the fear of that 14 year old boy once he started realizing his life was going to be taken from him and there was no one there to help him. So I just think about that. And, and yeah, at the moment, I can't stand white people. But once the anger subsides and the moment is gone, you know, you know what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and unfortunately, uh, evil acts happen everywhere. Like, for example, did you ever see the movie Paid in Full? Yeah. Well, I finally I, saw it. I know black people was on me for a minute when I said I never saw that movie. Right. Well, I've done interviews with the real people from Payton. Yeah. Well, I first did A.Z. Faison, who was the character Ace, played by Wood Harris. And just recently, the interview's coming out tomorrow. So by the time this comes out, people could actually watch it. I interviewed Pat Porter, who's Rich Porter's sister, was actually played by Regina Hall. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paid in full. Now... We got deep into the whole thing because her younger brother got kidnapped. In the movie. In the movie and in real life. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was, you know, Rich Porter was making a lot of money and his uncle kidnapped his own nephew in a van, took them somewhere, wanted like, 500,000 for ransom. And to show that they were serious, they cut off mm -hmm. his little brother's finger. Right. Put it in a coffee jar in a McDonald's. Mm. The uncle's right there, working with the family, trying to get him back when the whole time he's the kidnapper, right. along with this guy named Preacher, who was called the Black Hand of Death that was known right. for cutting people up and, and so forth. Ultimately, Rich Porter got killed by Alpo and when they realize that he's dead and there's no ransom money, they end up killing the little brother. Right. This is black people doing this to their own relative, <laughs> to their own nephew. This evil shit is not centered. It could happen to fucking anybody and it's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It's it's really just so. Yeah, but the, listen, again, that's that thing you, where you I'm- can I, You can compare that yeah, to I'm, an Emmett Till situation. But honestly, what I'm saying is that's honestly, that thing where you. I'm not saying one atrocity, atrocity is atrocity. Exactly. Foul shit is foul shit. Yeah. But come on. Like, like to, to go, well, you can't put a color. I know evil shit happens. Yeah. But I'm just saying like historically in this country where black people have gone through at the hands of white America. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like, you know. There's evidence, there's proof. There's a long history of this. Yeah, now listen, rest in peace, Emmett Till. He, uh, he changed history, ultimately. Well, him and his mother. His mother who made the decision to have an open casket right. funeral and to invite all the media outlets that would come, take pictures and plaster this picture all over America and the world for that matter. I think finally opened up America's eyes to say it was oh, the beginning. Yeah, it was the beginning. 
right. of, you could say it's the beginning of the civil rights movement. Yeah. I mean, you think that's a fair statement? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was, that was a big deal. And the fact that Caroline Bryant, who was the fuse, uh, who was the fire that, you know, lit this fuse, is still alive and a grand jury said no to pursuing her. Yeah, that's a bullshit. So, so this is what I'm saying. Like, it, it's, you know, we are the most fucked over people on the planet. Well, T.I., recently uh, a clip from uh, his podcast that came out recently, but it was from last year. He admitted to snitching on his dead cousin to get out of a gun charge. Mark did, shit. What, you gonna go to jail for a dead motherfucker? That's what I said. There's a lot of niggas that won't go to jail for a breathing living motherfucker. The nigga dead. That's what I said. You yeah. know, I interviewed uh, Birdman's half-brother, Terrence Gangster Williams. Right. And he essentially did the same thing. He was given like life plus 30 or something, some heinous amount of time. And at one point he cooperated against his friends who had killed a bunch of people, but they were dead at the time. Right. So he allowed them, you know, allowed the authorities to close a bunch of cold cases and so forth. And I think he got his time somewhat reduced for it. A lot of people still called him a snitch and so forth. And he came on and said, well, what's T.I. doing? <laughs> T.I. is doing the same thing I did. Right. Man, the detective asked me the question you had, like, when I first got in the game, right? This man got cold cases. This man got like 100 bodies. He want me to confess to and help out to close the case because, you know, when they close those homicides, it helps them too. It makes them look good because they can close the case. But in my mind, I'm like, man, no, I'm not doing that because I don't, some of these people that have been killed, they got family that's killers. They got people, you know, that I know there'd be a retaliation behind this stuff. And, and I didn't do that. Now, I understand you want to further your career. And I was trying to help myself too. But I was like, nah, man, let's pick. We pick certain ones, wrote a letter to the Fed. Um, then my co-defendant was to brag about homicides. And the Fed was like, Listen, man, you went, you you gave up this bull crap. Oh, and I also gave him some murders uh, with Sterling and Dooney. So some of the, some of my people that I'm at odds with now, uh, even BG was upset about it too, because they was like, man, you know, you tell it on the dead. You know, um, I didn't look at it like at the time. I was like, well, you know, this is a way I can get up out of prison. You know, I'm not uh, testifying on no one. You know, I'm gonna give him this here. They're going to cut my time. Cool, you know, but I understand. I respect it that telling is telling. So so what's the... You know, listen, um, people that live by the code of the streets, uh, smarten the fuck up. You know what I mean? Because the streets, those same streets that you, you know, you, you, you protecting a code will kill you. Yeah. So, you know, knock it off. You know what the most interesting thing about it is? Is that the people who stick to the code, who keep their mouth shut, who don't snitch, who do their 20, 30 years, they come out. You know what prize they get? Nothing. <laughs> when they get out? Nothing. Exactly. A couple of high fives. You real, nigga. You real. Right. There, there is time no, was real. Yeah. And let me tell you, all these drug kingpins who made a bunch of money when they're out, I've interviewed most of the big ones. <laughs> and the story's always the same. All the money they, they stashed, all the property they put in other people's names, by the time they get out, all that's gone. Wow. The money's been spent, the property is in someone else's name, but they're not going to sign it back over to you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And... Yeah, in, in their neighborhood, they're considered, you know, somewhat heroes and so forth, but there's usually, they're usually not well off financially. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times I pay them for their interviews and so forth, and it's, you could tell that they actually appreciate the money. You know, they're right. not like multimillionaires where it's like, I don't give a shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's no prize at the end. Yeah. There isn't. You've given up all this time. You come out fucked up. You don't know what a... You know, iPhone does. You don't know what the internet is. Right. Or, you know, I remember I interviewed this uh, this one girl who killed, her name was Loka D. She was the first minor in America to get life with no parole. She killed two Latin kings. Damn. And she says that 
when she got home, she had to put bars on her window in her apartment to just go to sleep. Because she's just so used to living in a cell that, that she couldn't get used to not being in one. Wow. But like I said, I'm I'm working two jobs and I still don't got it right. I still don't. I still I have bars on my window because I still need to feel like I'm in prison sometimes. I wake up in the middle of the night and realize, oh my God, I'm in a real bed. Like I can get up. I, I have to I look, sometimes I wake up and look around and wait for the officer to think the officer gonna do a walkthrough so I can ask him, can I go to the bathroom? That's sad. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's some ill shit. Right. I mean, you come out. And you come out with a bunch of felonies on your record. You're going to have a hard time getting an apartment. You're going to have a hard time getting a job. Right. You pretty much have forever punishments. And, um, you know, most people you come out are probably dead or in jail also. Right. You know, your mom is probably gone by that time if you've done 30, 40 years. Yeah, man. This whole this whole rule of the streets thing, I, I've, never, I've never co-signed it. I've always thought, you know, it's, I don't know, man. It's almost selfish in a way a lot of times these guys have kids right. who end up growing out growing up without them sometimes these kids end up in the same prison system that they do you know i've what was it uh blue boy him and his son i think were locked up together like you know both of them for murder like it's it's some fucked up shit you know i i recently performed <clears throat> in indianapolis and listen i got love for the streets the streets show me love you know hardcore niggas yo i'm grooming the projects the ghetto Yo, I fucks with you. That's what they tell me. Hey, you my nigga. You my favorite comedian. I fucks with you. And I love that. Uh, but sometimes the streets get on my fucking nerves. Like, there was this girl who came in 15 deep celebrating. So they already fucked up on the alcohol. She's wearing shades and a fucking dark comedy club. Just ignorant, belligerent. I got to keep battling with this bitch. And I always say the thing about drunk motherfuckers, usually people that want to heckle, you hit them with two, three insults. They shut the fuck up. But when somebody is so fucked up with alcohol and drunk, they become like suicide bombers. They're willing, they're willing to die. <laughs> you can't shut them up. You can't. So she was a suicide bomber. So I'm going back and forth with this bitch. And at one point, the show becomes so disruptive that it's not even fun anymore. It's not even a show anymore. It throws the timing off. Everything is just fucked. So normally I do like an hour 15, maybe an hour 20. The most I'm required to do on contract, on paper, is 45. A headliner does 45 to an hour. Anything more is on you. So I looked at the clock and I'm at like a 50, 55. I said, yo, I'm done. Because this it wasn't even a show anymore. So then the same motherfucker come up to me after the show or, or stand up in the middle of the show. Welcome to my city. Welcome to the city. I run the city. You niggas make me sick because it's just like, and I talked about this. It's like Chris Rock's great joke. I love black people. I hate niggas. Niggas will rob you and then come up to you next day and go, heard you got robbed. Come up to me after the show. I fucks with you. Let me get a picture with you. You oh, mean wait, you wait, wait, the same girl that ruined the yes, show wants to get a, a picture, picture with me? Ah. Like, like you want me to <laughs> embrace you? Bitch, you disrupted the fucking show. What'd you do? I took the picture. Ah. I took the <laughs> picture. Out. But no, no, no. Not that I punked out, but I wasn't happy about it. When, like, usually when I take a picture, you know, I boom, boom, boom. So you know, I smile. A picture. <laughs> no, it was it was a straight. <laughs> so then I sent this post out and I just went, look. I think it's so sad that some of my people are in a mentality of my city. You'll never leave your city. You'll never go outside your block. You'll never go outside of your radius. All you know is your city. And it's like, dude, there's a big, beautiful world out there. And with that mentality comes a behavior. And with that behavior, you, you, you put yourself in a box. And I'm just going, dude, I've, I've, I've been to Europe. I've been to Helsinki, Finland. I've been to Africa. I've been on a safari, you know, the Middle East, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Why would you not want to go past your city? Why would you not want to see how beautiful this world is and how much it there is to be 
You know, to embrace. This, this, this world offers you a lot. Get out of that mentality. Get, get out of your fucking block. And, and just, you know, I love the streets, but ghetto niggas, man. Grow up. Grow the fuck up. Well, you know, just recently, uh, you know, Blueface, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know him, but I know I mean, him. You know, you know who he is. Yeah. He ended up shooting at someone at a strip club in Las Vegas. It's called Euphoric. It was a black-owned strip club. That club is now shut down because of that shooting. Right. And the owners went ballistic. They basically were like, do this whole message saying that this was the only black owned strip club in the city. And we had just opened, it's only been open a year. We had all these girls that were employed, you know, and he said, it wasn't a white man that closed us down. It was a black man. It was Blueface. You know, he came in with gang related activities and basically shot at this dude and now the city has closed us down and now we're out of business. <laughs> and um, I mean, you can't even, I mean, you know, they have a, a very valid point. Like, you know, the, they were trying to operate a yeah, legitimate let me, business let me, let me, let me. In, a, in a city that's very hard. You know, Vegas is not an easy city to run a business in. There's a lot of competition. Let me, yeah. let me, let me tell you two things that irked the shit out of me. And this is where, here we go. Uh, I wish two things my people would stop doing, both black men and black women. And I know this is where I'm, Monique spoke to this, and this is where I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. I wish black women would stop wearing bonnets and hair wraps in public and in airports. I wish black men would pull their fucking pants up. I get so embarrassed when I see niggas in public with their whole ass out. And, and, and I know black people who say, well, why you care what white people think? What a fucking dumb thing to say. It's not about being validated by white folks. You're a grown man. Why do you have your ass in the air? I, I, I'm getting to a point where I'm 47, where like my mother, I think when you get in a certain point in age where you feel like you just want to say what you want to say and do what you want to do. But I know I wouldn't do this because you, you're going to get in a fight. But I would love to just grab niggas' pants and pull them up. Go, nigga, pull your goddamn pants up. Well, do you know where that started, actually? Like, in jail. Style? Yeah, it's just some jail yeah. shit. Yeah, and most black niggas don't, most black men don't even know that. Right, it's basically a sign. That says my ass is takeable, I'm yeah, fuckable. exactly. Most black men don't even know that. Right. But even if it wasn't the jail factor, pull your fucking pants up. You look ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I, I've sagged my pants. Like, you know, I, I have my underwear slightly over my pants even to this day, but I've never had my entire ass. I'm, d- I'm talking about the, the, entire, the top of the jeans, yeah, the cheek, underneath the, bo- the cheeks. Underneath the cheek, yeah. I've never done that in life. I've always thought that was dumb. You know and them the same ones that'll come to the show and go, my city, you in my city. Them niggas don't own a passport because if you owned a passport and you could travel the world then that means there's something about you that's renowned. There's something about, that comes with a mindset and a maturity, traveling the world. Yeah, I mean, you know who does that? Soldier Boy. What, the pants? The pants hanging, hanging. With the How old is he? Uh, he got me in his 30s at this Matter point. Matter of fact, uh, he lives near where I live and we were both in Wells Fargo and he's at the teller window ass completely out yeah and i'm watching this white woman look at that and she's baffled shaking her head (laughs) she looks at me and i look right back at her and go it's embarrassing (laughs) yeah yeah soldier boy is one of these culprits he's he's one of the 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 ass hanging out type dudes as you said you actually saw him out in public it looks ridiculous when i see a black woman with a bonnet on i want to snatch it and go cut that fucking shit off your head. Do your fucking hair or wear a hat. Well, you did a post where I don't know if this is true or not. Oh, wait, Vlad, I'm telling you the comments on the bonnet. Oh, yeah. This is where the black women are going to come at me hard. Hey, here's what it is. Well, you actually put a post up where you talked about how Jennifer Lopez is allegedly going to be covering Whitney Houston songs. I interviewed Rodney Jerkins, a.k.a. Dark Child. This is the man who was Michael Jackson's uh, last producer. He has a string of Grammys under his belt. He has worked with 
every great singer pretty much that there was. When I asked him who the greatest female singer of all time is, he said, Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. And this is someone who has worked with Whitney, has written hits for her. Jennifer Lopez cannot cover a Whitney Houston song. Dude, the fact that she said she (laughs) felt her and Whitney had the same vocal range. No, she didn't say that. She did. When did she say this? I saw the quote. Let me me look this up. Uh, But even if she didn't say it, if you think you can sing a Whitney song, then that means you have to believe it to a certain degree. Well, you could... Anyone could sing a Whitney Houston. I can sing a Whitney Houston song. It won't be very good, but, you know. No, no, you oh, can't. you're right. Did Jennifer Lopez compare her vocal range to Whitney? Hold on. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look. Is this a clip where she tries to sing? Uh, Have you seen that? Uh, no. I oh, seen it. God. She's, she's practicing. Dude, I didn't even know that on some of her songs, Ashante was singing. Who songs? Jennifer Lopez's oh, songs. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. The I'm Real. I'm Real with LL Cool J. No, LL Cool J is not on I'm Real. Uh, I'm Real is- No, that's Ja Rule. Uh, ja Rule. Ja Rule. Yeah. Ja Rule. yeah. Uh, is it Ja Rule? Is it I'm Real? There's a song she did with LL. I think it's I'm Real though. But anyway, Ashanti is really the vocals on the track. She's singing the chorus. Hmm. Hmm. You know, listen, I I said in my post, when you talk about the greatest female vocalists of all time, you know, you talk about names like Whitney Houston, Patti LaBelle, Shaka Khan, Aretha Franklin, Mariah Carey. I'll even throw Christina Aguilera in there. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's nothing about Jennifer Lopez that, that screams singer or ability. Nothing. Let me see. She got credit for I'm Real. Who did? talking about Ashanti. Ashanti. Well, no, she just got credit. Yeah. For a long time, she wasn't give, given the credit. Yeah, here we go. So so I guess the, the controversy started when uh, Ashanti's vocals from the I'm Real demo track found their way to the song's final version. Okay, so there was a reference. But... I don't think, you know what I mean? For those that don't know, when you're not the song writer, a lot of times the writer will create a demo version of you. You know, not only will they give you the lyrics, but they'll actually sing the lyrics for you and actually create a version of the song for you to re-sing. So I think in this case, Ashanti had a demo version of that song since I think she helped write it. But I don't think that that demo version actually ended up on the final version of that song. I think that was actually Jennifer Lopez. That's what I think happened. Okay, but there was some sort of well. Like, let's let's do this. Mark well, let's do it. this. Would we be, would we be having this conversation about a Whitney Houston and Anita Baker, uh, a, a Shaka Khan, Jennifer a Patti Lopez? LaBelle? Jennifer Lopez is an okay singer. I think she she's always been. Uh, she is who she is because of her being a movie star, her being attractive, her being a great dancer. You know, dating Puffy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll give, there, I, will give, of, I will give her attractive and great dancer. You don't think she was a good actress? I think she was a good actress. She's not an Oscar winner, but I think she was a solid actress. She was starring in films. She she was she was carrying films. Just because you put on a uniform don't mean you qualify for the job. It's a whole lot of dudes out here wearing cop uniforms. Does that mean they're good cops? Jennifer Lopez, I think, is a solid actress. Solid actress. Like I said, not an Oscar winner. She's no Meryl Streep, but she can carry a movie. She's also like, I've interviewed her once. It was a phone interview. Like she actually has like a really dope personality. And I could, I could sort of see sort of like the overall allure and everything else like that. Like, like she's actually like an interesting person. She's fine. Listen, dog, she's a dime. Yeah. She's fine, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Still is. Yeah. Okay. Still is. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You know, for her age. For, for, for <laughs> yeah. Since, <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> You know, but you're not going to be able to pull off a Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Fuck out of here. You know, whereas, for example, like Christina Aguilera, when, um, who was it that died that actually asked Christina to sing at, at her funeral? It was, mm. a, it was a famous black singer. Aretha Franklin? No, 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 no. It was um, Etta James. Oh, okay. Etta James asked That's Christina an honor. 
to sing at yeah. her funeral. Which you got to have some pipes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but Christina actually has that voice. Yes. She could pull it off. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas, you know, other singers like Ashanti, she has a thing about her, but she doesn't have that voice like a Whitney or an Aretha or, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Those are, you know, those are the gods. You know, Whitney, you know, I mean, sorry, uh, Britney, Britney Spears, not, not a great singer, but has a presence, has a look. You know what I'm saying? It has a story, you, right. you know, and all the media around her. Britney Spears is the best nasal singer I've ever heard. <laughs> she sings through her nasal passages. That's funny. She's the best nasal singer ever. What about Rihanna? How would you rate her? Rihanna's got pipes. Rihanna can sing. And when I saw uh, Wakanda Forever, that ending song, Lift Me Up, wow. Rihanna's real deal. Yeah? Yeah. I wouldn't put her up there with a Whitney, though. Nobody's up there with <laughs> Maybe Aretha Franklin. Aretha and Patti LaBelle. Aretha was a motherfucker. Aretha you know. was a beast. Ooh. Aretha, Whitney, and Patti are like Jordan, Magic, and uh, Bird. You and Faze on Love. I interviewed him. The Musnick's the Booger. The what? The Musnick's Booger. The Musnick's Booger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that, I saw that, that, that interview your... during the heat of all what was going on with me. I saw I saw that. The, I, he, I, he said, he said, he's almost slapped the shit out of me. And I hit him back. I said, nigga, win. And and it's funny, a lot of people that talk shit about me, I slid in their DMs and I gave them my number. I said, say it to my face. Call me. Nigga, when did you ever come close to slapping the shit out of me? And what was so shocking was, I never had a problem with Faison. We never had a problem with each other. And then here's where he loses all credibility. And yes, I'm going to pat myself on the back. He said, all Aries does is impressions. That's like saying all Jordan could do was dunk. Nigga, I'm one of the most versatile, talented comedians in the game. I can sing. I can rap, I do impressions, I can do smart, witty, intellectual humor. I could give you that raw gutter shit. My crowd work is vicious. The fuck is he talking about? Well, he's someone I have on the show, you know, on a regular basis, like you. I brought it up to him and I'm like, listen, I, I fuck with Aries. You know what I'm saying? So what what exactly is the issue and can it be fixed? And he said that the issue was the Lizzo comments. He had a problem with the Lizzo comments. The fat nigga had a problem with the fat comments? And he's a comedian? What problem did he have specifically? I think it's the overall. The overall comments. But saying that, can y'all get on the phone and work it out so things don't continue to just go back They ain't going to continue because there's nothing to continue. Okay. I deaded that shit. When you say something so stupid and you just go, all that nigga can do is impressions. Anybody that's ever seen me live, nigga, my crowd work is better than some niggas material. And I'm not trying to be arrogant, but y'all been doing this 32 fucking years. I got a black belt in this shit. You know what I mean? So, so how is a comic, if you're a student of the game, do you honestly know me, know my work and go, Man, that's all that nigga can do. Word. And you're a comic and you're upset about jokes. Hand in your badge. Well, Mike Kemp did the same thing, right? After the Lizard. Hand in your badge. This is a fraternity, goddammit. Well, and listen, both these guys are no slouches when it comes to comedy. You can't say no. that Mike and I, did is I whack, not say? And, and did I not say? You can't say that Faison is whack. And, and, and I never did. Right. And I can say that. Faison does the best Ice Cube impression I've ever heard. Dude, you, you, I think it was here when we, on your show. Mm -hmm. I said, Mike Epps is talented as fuck. Yeah. He's a scene stealer. He's great in movies. Yeah. I said that. Yeah. I give niggas they props. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, hopefully y'all two can work it out and do some shit together or not. Like I said, I'm not here to fan the flames of beef, you know, especially there people. There is no beef. I ain't got no beef. Larsa Pippen is dating Michael, Michael Jordan's Jordan. son, Marcus Jordan. Right. Larsa's 48. Marcus is 31. Mm. 
I remember I heard a story that she was actually there when Marcus was born and she Oof. held the baby in her arms and said, she said, one day I will have you. That's hilarious. And nobody knew what she meant. And she was like, one day. That's not a true story. No, it's no, not true. I'm making all that up. up. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she actually said that she didn't even know, like, you know, because she, she was married to Scotty Paper. Right. He said that um, they weren't actually even like friends and really together at the time that they were born. Uh, she met him. You know, she had just met his son three years ago. She didn't really know his family. She was 21. And in college, when Scotty played that one year uh, with Michael Jordan, and they weren't friends and so forth. Um, it does look a little crazy because there is a level of beef between Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan. I don't know where that came from, dude. Well, it was from The Last Dance. Which I watch religiously. Yeah. Uh, you know. So Scotty, Scotty basically... His thing was that he didn't, when it was being recorded, he thought it was about the whole team and about how, you know, like the whole run and everything else like that. Which it was. But he didn't realize it was mostly focused on Michael Jordan. You see what I'm saying? So when it came out and some of the stuff that kind of came out, he said that he was displeased with the final product. And listen, ultimately, you can understand the frustration. Like, for example, like John Sally, who's played with... Jordan and Pippen on the same team. Every time I see John on your show, I, and I love John. Yeah. John's one of the sweetest dudes, legit human beings. But you can't take what John said. He played for the Pistons, nigga. Him saying something positive about MJ, that's, come on, man. Well, what he said was that the most skilled basketball player he's ever played with was Scottie Pippen. It wasn't Jordan. <sighs> <laughs> If the dumbest shit ever said was a person. You know, I hate when idiots make this point when I get into arguments about Jordan and Pippen. Well, Michael never won without Scotty. And Scotty never won without Michael. That's a moot fucking point. No one wins by themselves. Magic needed Kareem, vice versa. Shaq needed Kobe, vice versa. Bird needed Mikhail and Parrish, vice versa. It's a team fucking game. That is a moot point but isn't it kind of funny that when mike went to go play baseball did Pippen win nope but he did when he came back yeah he won when mike came back so come on now and people go well yeah uh he he, he carried the team to the playoffs where they was like one bullshit call away from going to the finals the team was still 95 percent intact from the previous championship. Yeah. The only missing piece was MJ, but they didn't proceed to the finals. Why? Because the only missing piece was MJ. Right, when Dennis Rodman joined the team, then they took it up another notch. Yeah, they you replaced know, another, Taurus Grant. Yeah, yeah. Another, another big piece of the puzzle and, and so forth. Listen, I'm not a professional basketball Isn't player. Isn't it ironic that Scottie Pippen's beef comes when he's trying to sell a book well, and his yeah. alcohol? Yeah, did you know that actually part of the divorce settlement with Larsa Pippen is that on top of the spousal support and child support, she actually got a piece of Scotty's pension. And, and you defend this shit? I'm not defending that. Oh, okay. I'm not defending it. You just defend 200,000 a month. Yep, with Kanye. No, but I don't think someone should get someone's I'm pension. I'm a boxing fan. Do you know that uh, when Sugar Shane Mosley got a divorce, his wife got the belts? <laughs> the belts! <laughs> this bitch ain't threw one punch. The belts! <laughs> This man literally bled for them fucking things. I've never heard of that. I have never heard so of that. That's what I'm saying, man. Throw the whole fucking system away. Hey, man, listen. No, I do not. I do Divorce not is male sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, I think Exhibit's wife wants spousal support forever. I think that was like the <laughs> Just <actual> forever. Forever. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying when I go women, when they get upset, they turn into children. That's child shit. Forever. Give me your belt. Well, I think what usually happens in divorces is that both people take as much as the law allows. At the end of the day, if the law allows you this much money, that person will take it. If it doesn't allow that much money, then it is what it is. I mean, listen, there's also a lot of women- Would you admit that- they need a, a, a to do a, 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 a re, what do they call that shit? Uh, a, a, you know, when somebody gets made over, what do they call it? A remodel or remodel? A, yeah, I that's mean, not listen. the word I'm looking for. But you, yeah, you know, don't you think that the system 
needs a makeover. Well, look, you also have a lot of situations, like for example, uh, Erica Mena, who I've interviewed before, had two kids with Safari, another person I've interviewed. And I remember on Love and Hip Hop, they actually filmed the moment she got the phone call from the court system where she was getting 4,000 a month from Safari for two kids. And she was like crying and bursting into tears. Like, because that's 4, not 000, enough. Because it wasn't enough. You know what I'm saying? For the um, kids. For two kids. Okay. Two, two young Ki kids. Two young kids will go through five. They, they need 5,000 a month. 4,000 a month is two kids. Only Four. two 2,000 a month per kid. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. $2,000. But it can get the job done, though. Yeah. She could get a job to pay the rent, no? Well, she'll have to. She's, she's not getting spousal support. So, really, two kids, 4000 Not a lot. Not a lot. And a lot of women, you know, I remember, like, one of Future's baby mothers, like, she had wanted some astronomical fee, and I think she got, like, a couple thousand a month. And Future's worth, like, you know, he just sold his catalog for, like, $65 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times... These women don't get these women who think that they they struck a gold by getting you know pregnant by a celebrity. It doesn't work out that way. You know, ultimately, a lot of times the courts say one kid, two thousand bucks sounds that's fair to us. That's because in in their minds they want to continue to live the life that's provided by a celebrity, right? So when they don't get the money that will allow them to continue that lifestyle, that in their eyes is a huge letdown. When in reality, that's sufficient. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you're a safari, based on what I think his salary is around, about how much he makes, 4000 is probably a fair amount for him and somewhat of a fair amount for her. And, you know, I'm saying safari is not worth $100 million or anything else like that. He does reality TV and probably some club walkthroughs. Like, you know, he has no albums. He doesn't have a business that I know of. He's basically hustling and making his money as it comes. Four thousand bucks a month. I mean, you know, that's a that's a hit. You know, a lot of times with with uh, with child support, you pay the money after taxes, right? It's not like you get the money right pre tax and then just hand it over. No, you get the money, you get taxed, and then you got to hand over the the post tax money to your kid's mother. So it's four thousand a month is is probably a hit for Safari, and four thousand a month probably is. She feels it's not enough for the two kids. And, you know, they always say that a great compromise is when everyone's unhappy. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> if everyone's upset over how it came out, that usually means it's a good compromise. Mm. If one person's going, yeah, it usually wasn't a good compromise. So, right. Hey, man, it, it is what it is. So we reached the end. What do you got coming up? Uh, I'm still touring uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, I'm all over the place. Um, uh, Proud Family, the cartoon got oh. picked, back, picked back up. Aha. Uh -huh. You so were on the first season? I've been on since day one. How many seasons are there now? Uh, well, you know, when it originally aired, it aired on ABC, and then it went away, and then they brought it back, and now it's on Disney. Right, right. The reboot. So you did both? The yes, original and the yes, reboot? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, and who do you play? Uh, Wizard Kelly. The voice okay. of Wizard Kelly. Uh so I'm I'm back to doing that, and then uh, I got to do some reshoots on this movie uh, with Paul Rodriguez and a bunch of comedians uh, that we just did. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be the rose that grows through the concrete, because you know Hollywood don't really like your boy. So uh, I'm trying to sneak my way into Club Fifty Four. I mean, Studio ever, Fifty Four. Uh, did you ever uh, audition for any more Jordan Peele movies? Remember oh no. Nah. Now you're done? Nah. I, I'm sh not that, you know what it is. You know what I mean? So the by, comments you made? It ain't by choice. You know, it is what it is, man. Well, and I'll say this. I'm actually a Jordan Peele fan. I thought Get Out was great. I it thought was. That Us was brilliant, but nope. I heard. Yeah. That was a strikeout. Uh, well, I mean, I, I didn't even really understand what the hell it was even about. I'm like, it was listen, over, man, and I'm you like. can't win them all, baby. Yeah. I mean, listen, he's got a good track record. And from what I understand, nope even made money. And right. it's not like he has, you know, he had uh, Kiki in it, and he had uh, that one dude that was in a uh, Black Panther was in it. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I forget his name. Is he, 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 Daniel Kaluuya. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing it. My apologies if I am. Uh, but, yeah, he had a strong cast. He had a budget. But that movie was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? But you can't hit a home run every time. 
No. But listen, at the end of the day, I don't think Jordan Peele really gives a shit about what you said. You know what I mean? Oh, I think he does. You think he does? Yeah. I think he does. Yeah. I don't think you'd be in a, at an audition if he did. Well, I, I think- uh, Just like you didn't go to the Mike Tyson podcast. Listen, people people love to let you know without letting you know. Mm. You know? It, egos, man. This business is egos, man. It, it is. You know? But, but when you're doing a film- and you know how much is riding on that film when it's your film. Right. I don't think you're sitting there making people like, you know, <laughs> basically dance for you this just is, to, just to embarrass themselves. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hollywood, man. Yeah. Yes. Power people, trips. People do that shit. Power trips. All right. That, you know, when you, when you, you don't think that some dudes have you come in and they look at you a certain way. They don't ever have to tell you. They don't ever have to say it, but you can tell, you can look into my eyes. And you know they know. And they're going to make you dance the dance and sweat the sweat just to let you know, I know. And I got you. Well, I can tell you as a business owner that films people for a living, if I'm not fucking with someone, they're not going to get an interview. I'm not going to have them come in, do an interview, and then yeah, but that's scrap, scrap the interview. No, 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 no. But that, but no. Make an appointment and then not show up just to no, fuck with them. No, like, I ain't no, got time no, for that. No, but that's a little bit different, though. And an interview signifies you got the job. Uh -huh. We're doing okay. this. All right. It's not an audition. And then, and then you pay people. So some, even if you would Sometimes. So, oh, sometimes. Well, not, not everyone gets paid to sit down with me. Okay. I yeah. thought, all right. No, no, no. Not everyone. I mean, listen, some people, I couldn't pay them. Like, you know what I mean? If you're like a, like an NLE chopper who's making tons of money and so forth, like you're not going to do an interview because you're getting paid. It's because you want it to actually sit down on the Yeah, platform. but is that person saying to you, don't worry about paying me? Or you're just going, I'm not paying them. Um, payment is not even discussed. It's not even a part of the discussion. Like we, we pay all of our regular guests, but a lot of times, you know, like if someone's on a promo run, they're, they're not asking for payment. They're, they're trying to promote their album. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like they're not, they're there for other reasons. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Shaka Khan didn't charge us anything to do an interview. She's Shaka Khan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. Lunell got paid to book the interview and to conduct it. Right. But, Shaka didn't give a shit. You know, just like me, like I have offers to do interviews on certain platforms, which I really just don't even entertain. But if I do like DJ Academics or No Jumper, I don't charge them for those interviews. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm doing it because I fuck with the platform. And then they go and do interviews with me because they fuck with the platform. You know, it's- Who's you, bigger, you or No Jumper? Me or No Jumper? I mean, I'm a numbers guy. And we have a similar number of uh, YouTube subscribers. We're all like around the 5 million mark. So I would say we're somewhat equivalent. Okay. And that's not even me being, you know, whatever politically correct. Me, me and uh, Adam are, are really cool. We're, we're friends. You know what I'm saying? He, he he said multiple times that he looked at Vlad TV as a blueprint to what he did. Right. And he took his own, his own way and, you know what I mean, and so forth. Uh, but I think we're about the same. I mean, I, I'm thinking that he may surpass me at one point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Since he has a slightly younger demographic than I do. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, we're all making money and I'm I'm happy to see all of my contemporaries doing well right. because it's not a competition. There's more than enough viewers. There's more than enough money to go around for yeah. everyone. You know, anyone who beefs with me, who does interviews, I think is just silly. You know what I mean? Just like I'm sure... I'm not sure. I mean, I know that, you know, comedians beef with each other and people from the outside probably don't get it. <laughs> you know, probably this is going like, what? what? So if if one person gets booked at a club, there's no other clubs to get booked at? Like, what's right. the big deal? But in, in any field, you know, I mean, should tarot card readers beef with each other? Psychics <laughs> beef with each other online. You see the craziest right. shit. You know what I mean? Like, religious people beef online with each other. Yeah. Like, it just is what it is. Ari Spears, man, always a pleasure. When you come in, tell them about the podcast again. Spears and Steinberg, hit me up on Instagram. Hit my DMs. I'll send you the links available on all streaming platforms. Boom. Till next time. Yes, sir. Peace.